Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kickout Crew episode nine. Man, we are uh, sure catching a lot of momentum, gaining a lot of steam. Want to thank all the fans for supporting us. Thank you for your feedback, positive and negative. Thank you for all the love that we get and everybody promoting us. I uh, really appreciate that. But, uh, you know, it's enough about me. Uh, thanks for the follows. Thanks for the likes, subscribes, everything. But, uh, you know, two topics. Whoever, banter back and forth. <laughs> you guys mind awesome. if I say something real quick? You guys mind if I say something? Go I want it. to thank I want to thank the five of you guys for carrying the show last week in my absence. Uh, you guys did a hell of a job on episode eight. Uh, great job. Uh, my back is sore, but I, I don't mind carrying the show. My back is sore. It is sore. I, I don't mind. It, it was rough. <laughs> so thank yeah, you. Right. Great show. Well, let's hear about oh, the thanks, show. coach. Glad you're back this week. Hey, but well, wait a minute. You're the wimp that talked about Sammy Guevara when I was gone, right? Sammy Guevara, I'll bring him up again. He's the man. The man? You, that man caused another man to look like Brad Stanton last night. That, that <laughs> Sammy Guevara did the unthinkable. And now we got uh, Ortiz Santana. Hey, isn't that funny? Brad Stanton, Ortiz, Santana. Kind of similar. Both bald. And that was Sammy's fault. The girl's classless. <laughs> and uh, even that outfit she wore last night. That's not what a lady uh, should wear. There's teenagers watching this program. They're disrespectful and uncouth. And that's There's not... teenagers loving this program. That's not how a lady should be portrayed. The, uh, the, the matches we've seen today, classic women doing what they do best using their skill and not their looks and body to win matches and gain fame yeah quiet you know. down huh dowling <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you want me to say <laughs> he's the man sammy Guevara and take he even Thompson. came out there wearing his homeboy's mask to make his homeboy look like a heel and it was him the whole time so what kind of a friend is that well, oh, he got Fuego del Sol over 50,000 followers on Twitter because of that. Is he really a heel or no? Well, yes, he is. <laughs> we know who got their knees dirty. Yeah, he's got him a bunch of followers, but can he get him any matches? Bam. For those of you at home that don't know what we're talking about, if you're not <laughs> uh, a regular wrestling fan, we're talking about AEW. Uh, we're talking about Dynamite. We're talking about Sammy Guevara. He'll turn, joining the... Uh, what are they called again, uh, Devin? The Jericho Appreciation Society. Chris Jericho has, uh, you know, uh, reinvented himself for about the 17th time. And Sammy Guevara joined his society. Sammy Guevara is Devin's hero, and he's in love with his fiance. I'm in love with my fiance. Sammy is in love with his own fiance. So but yes, uh, you know, for the time, yes. Yeah, but would you... <laughs> Would you dump Erica for a better looking girl after you proposed to her? <laughs> Absolutely not. Me and Erica are in it to win it. In it exactly. till then. Sammy On my TV. <laughs> anyway. We're not even here to talk about Sammy and Ty, though. All right. <clears throat> what are we talking about, Brad? I, I don't um I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, you the outline and you don't know what we're talking about? Wait a minute. Well, we've already gone off the outline. If, uh, <laughs> so glad, uh, I spent so much time making the outline. Uh, so today we are doing, uh, we're starting a series on the history of women's wrestling. History in the, that we were a part of, um, actually. You know, Coach is 48 years old. He has spoken, he has said that a number of times. I'm 46. So we, then we go all the way down to Devin, who's 24 years old. So we have seen some things, some different things in wrestling. Uh, changes in wrestling over the time we are going to start with the golden age uh the golden age that goes from the uh early 80s uh goes to about 90 early 90s after that you have uh, my dogs barking in the background i uh, hope that doesn't bother you <laughs> uh we we have the new generation uh attitude era and we go into um ruthless aggression and then there's the, there's that tv and, and reality time and now into today the women's revolution we are gonna do our best to do this justice. Uh, we are not historians. This is uh, what we have looked at over time, uh, over our time of watching wrestling and uh, we, will, we will do our best, okay? So um, 
that is a description of what we're going to do. And like I said, today, we're going to start with the golden age. So James, hi. The golden age. All right. Well, uh, I guess our very first match would be uh, the fabulous Mula, cha-ching, cha-ching, versus uh, a very, very young sensational Sherry from 1982. Not really sure the date or the location, but hey, it's uh, it's good to see you know a very very young Sherry. She's just like a regular chick, I believe. Uh, her hair wasn't even dyed at that time. She's just uh, you can tell she's breaking into the business. More than likely trained by Mula, so it was cool to see her before. I don't know. She's still sexy. She's one of the sexiest women in wrestling to me ever. Sensational Sherry. She lives up to the name. I'll tell you that much. But uh, yeah, that's I don't really know exactly where this was. Uh, placed or taped but i no, need to pay our researchers a little bit better so we can find they, this stuff out there yeah. is no there is nowhere that i could find it either uh brandy from alaska we know you're listening um <laughs> any corrections you want to make to us uh we we, we have our pens ready uh we have, we're watching our twitters but yes there was the only thing that said the only thing that was said about this match is it was in 1982 okay so we're going to take a different approach here. This is only a little bit over a four, a little under five minute match. The reason we picked this match is because of who's in it. You cannot talk about the golden age without the fabulous Moolah. And of course, Sherry Martel. Uh, for most of us, she has been, played more of a manager role uh, in our times. Even, even like even me, because uh, I, I don't, I didn't, wasn't really watching in 1982, like a lot. So uh, this was, uh, this was something we, reason we wanted to dive into it. Um, but before we get started with the actual match, uh, there is some uh, interesting things about the women's title at this time. And I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Mike Whitaker. Uh, I believe you have some info on that. Um, yeah, well, actually, this one right here. Um, I got uh, Mula. She won the, w, I guess it was the w, or NW, NWA title at September 18th, 1956. I'll tell you how long that was. Um, this it was her uh she was the third champion at it um she bought the rights in the 70s of the title so then she owned it so of course she was the champion um she defended nwa until 84 and in 84 or actually 83 is when wwf at the time um bought the rights from her for the title so um yeah, no, I'm sorry. She bought it in 84. Um, WWF doesn't claim anything from like 56 to 84 besides Mula being the champion. So she is actually a, was it like a 28 years? She was claimed as champion at the time for that one. Um, and then it became inactive in 1990 when Rock and Robin vacated it when she quit the WWF. The sister of Jake um, the Snake Roberts. Sister of Jake the Snake Roberts. Then I also went on more further in detail with it. Um, in 93, um, Alexa, uh, Alonda Bray's won, won it in a tournament, but um, became inactive again in 95 when she threw it in the garbage. In 1995, on WCW Nitro. Thanks a lot, Bischoff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Son of a Blame Bischoff. Um, so from and then from ninety five to ninety eight, there was no women's champion. In ninety eight, Jackie won a tournament to become the next women's champion for WWF. Um, it would go from ninety eight to two thousand and eight as the women's champion, and two thousand and eight WWE created the Divas title when they had the brand split and needed another title for SmackDown. In 2010, they unified the titles again, and it was just the Divas title. Um, then they called it the Divas title until 2016, and that's when it once again was renamed the women's title with Lita at WrestleMania doing the new belt. And now we got a Raw Women's title and a SmackDown Women's title. Awesome, Mike. Thank you so much for that. Uh, a little brief history that we just wanted to give everyone that the, that the title was actually purchased is so interesting to me. Um, so thank you so much for that, Mike. 
Um, yeah, was it, and another thing too, I got, I noticed, I and I didn't have it on my notes, but I read it. Um, it was when WWF was in and out of NWA. So, you know, they did, they were part of it, and they weren't part of it. Then they got back in, and then when they got back out again in '84, that's when they bought the rights. But Mula actually had the rights to the title, so. I guess technically she could take it anywhere, wherever she wanted to at the time. But um, I just thought it was interesting how WWF doesn't bring up any kind of history besides Mula as a 29 year champion. Yeah, very interesting. Which is unbreakable. So let's see if uh, Roman Reigns breaks it because I'm sure he's getting it on that road. <laughs> Especially with all those injuries, you know. So Mula is 59 years old here. Devin, anybody with that kind of longevity today? Uh, yeah, I think Sting is older than that, honestly. Sting's, um, yeah, yeah, 56 he's, years old. 62, and 62. Yeah, 62 years old. Oh, wow. And Sherry is 24 years old here, and she was a student of, uh, of the fabulous Melissa. So that is correct, James. You were right about that. Um, so on the announce team today, uh, we have Vince McMahon and Pat Patterson. James, what did you think of that combination? I uh, like uh, you can tell that Vince is definitely uh, trying to sell it, uh, especially the viewers at home, because, you know, <clears throat> no offense to anyone here. But back in the day, those women's matches really weren't, you know, the, the top of the card type thing. It was more straight up exhibition. So uh, the crowd's a little, you know, mum about it there's obviously high pitch screaming for sure but uh so vince and them are you know selling it to the viewer at home that this is like a big ordeal but looking at the crowd they're all sitting on their ass <laughs> you know not really reacting much and we have one of the greatest referees of all time in this match dick worley dick worley very good yeah, a lot of fast action in this match also coach um we know you like the action what did you think of the action in this match uh well, first of all, I really like that ref bump. I've never seen a ref bump like that in that match uh, where they were kind of using the referee as, a, as a, like laying in between them. I thought that was hilarious. I also thought that it was pretty stiff. One, uh, one kick by Mula went a little south of the border, and uh, you can tell that Sherry Martell, like, <gasps> she took it. And, uh, and the weights that they said, they said Mula was uh, 135 and Sherry was 145. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so they yeah. did uh, doctor up the, the weights as well. No guardrails at all. I thought that was unusual. Uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. And uh, the count seemed really quick. Yep. Uh, every time, even when it was a two count, it was boom, boom. And the three count was... Uh, the final was just boom, boom, boom. Uh, nothing spectacular on the move wise, just stiff and, and enjoyable. Did you read my notes? Cause that, that covers about three quarters of it. Um, okay. Let me, let me go down the list here. <laughs> oh, um, anyway, uh, Adam, what did you think of, uh, what did you think of Mula's selling in the match? Well, they're actually both of them sold pretty good. Um, Mula's always going to work heel. Um, I wish the match would have been a little bit longer, but, um, <clears throat> oh, I sound like crap, but, um, no, the selling was pretty good, you know, from the eighties. I mean, considering they didn't have a lot of reps back then. And as far as what I know, Moolah started rest. She started training some of the women back in the eighties, like on a mattress in her living room. So to get trained on something like that, to get into the ring, to bump like they are and sell it like they are, it really wasn't that bad. I, I, it wasn't bad at all. It, it wasn't bad at all. Now, I, 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 it was interesting what you said there about uh, I wish the match was longer. I mean, we would have to consider this an enhancement match. I mean, yes, Sherry Martell is, we know her now, <laughs> but she was a student of Mula at the time. Uh, I, would, uh, I would think, now I, I don't have this factual, but he, I think she was uh, in school with her up until about 81, 82, so right around this time. And I don't even, you know, you don't know when this aired to compare to what it is, that kind of thing, but um, you know, it was probably an enhancement type match of her just trying to get one of her students over. But um, James, you know, Mula striking in this, like Coach said, was was pretty hard. Uh, but she was definitely playing to the crowd. Uh, what did you think of the crowd reaction to this match? Uh, you know, very uh, 
very high pitch reactions uh, from, you know, the male fans didn't really pop or anything until pretty much the end. But it was a lot of, you can tell that the women in the crowd were definitely into it because they were pretty much yelling and screaming the whole match. Um, I did like how when Sherry went to the top rope, there was literally no reaction from the crowd at all. And I thought that was strange, especially considering back in the day, figure that, oh, she's on the top rope. Oh! But there was none of that. <laughs> she goes to the top rope and the crowd's just silent. What about that catapult move, Mike, that where she, um, Sherry pulls Mula back in. It was like a catapult through the r- ropes a little bit. And like, well, like kind of pushed her down on the ropes and she did a flip into the ring. Did you think that move was impressive? Yeah, it was interesting. <clears throat> um, I like that one. Another move, though, that I seen that I liked was when Mula grabbed her, um, like with both hands and grabbed her by the throat and threw her against the ropes. And then she came back and she picked her up again and then threw her again. I thought that move was pretty interesting, too. It's something you don't see today. So, Adam, have you ever put your hand out to shake? Um, have you ever, have you ever uh, played the heel character? By the way, I want to dumb this down a little bit for some of the non-wrestling fans. Uh, a heel in wrestling is a bad guy. Um, a face in wrestling is a good guy. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous to our, our loyal fans, but we know we have a lot of non-wrestling fans out there that are trying to learn. So, um, Adam, have you ever... Um, been on the heel end of that of, of a match and put your hand out to shake an opponent's hand and should he trust you no if you're working heel you don't ever shake your hand to none of them and a matter of fact there was one time in boaz me and my cousin were working heel and the, pro- the promoter told us look these people in this little section right here they believe that it's completely real which us country folks down here in the south anybody over the age of 40 thinks it's completely real that's just how it is. I don't know why. Arn Anderson talks about an older lady that used to poke him with a, with a, uh, with a cane all the time. I mean, it's just real down here. So we would, instead of, you know, reaching out, you know, saying, hey, how you doing? Me and my cousin actually went to this little corner, and we pissed them off so bad, they was actually out back waiting on us to come out. We had to get escorted back home because they were so pissed off because we wouldn't give them a time, the time of day, other than what the promoter told us to say, which back then it's a little bit different than what you can say now. But the fact of the matter is he said, look, these are the people you need to go to. And one of the things we were taught was you don't reach your hand out to shake their hands. You point at them and call them whatever you got to call them to piss them off to get a reaction. So if there's a heel reaching out to try to get handshakes and high fives, they ain't a heel. Uh, Devin, there was a question about this uh, Sherry Martell in particular, right, from Brandy? Can yeah. you uh, read that question for us? Uh, yes. I should have had it pulled up. You should. I could have given you a heads up, right? <laughs> <laughs> James, while he's looking it up, I saw you research where the match was. Yeah. Uh, MSG, which should have been able to tell by the lighting and everything, uh, June 5th, 1982. Sources say. And just for some history, um, uh, before this, it, women's wrestling was actually banned at MSG, and Mula was the first one to wrestle there and end that ban. So, again, um, there's going to be some negative things we say about Mula here. Well, I mean, not so much negative as in uh, we don't really know, but there's some things that have come out about her, but there's no doubt about her influence um, in, in, in professional wrestling for women. But, Devin, do you have that info now? Yeah, Brandy Wagner, one of our good friends, uh, tap gal brandy wagner her question for us was why is sherry the greatest of this era now i'm so just gonna open in, it up to all of you so as in the golden age not necessarily this match yeah this the the golden generation okay. itself um well be, yeah so she was a champion for 15 months um and for a lot of us and especially i mean brandy's very young too you know we we didn't see this side of her uh until unless we looked back uh, but she she is one of the, uh, the she's definitely one of the pioneers of uh, of changing of changing the game, and she only uh, she made things she made things different, and she was able to get heat. She was able to get people to cheer for her, and for some reason I'm making James laugh. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Yeah, nothing. Just can't you know. I love the historical uh, you know look back on this, and can't wait for the feedback on this uh, stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, she she definitely changed the game. Uh, so I, I think she is one of the best. I don't think she's the best. Um, anybody else? I like Missy Blue. Missy Blue was a great wrestler back in the day. 
So there was a lot of great wrestlers that didn't quite get the recognition that they deserved, but definitely Sherry Martel was in that top five category. Yeah, I agree. Do you think it's because of uh, Mula training her? Like that's why she became who she was? Well, Mula was uh, not the only one that trained her, though. Um, but she did okay. go to Mula's school, and um, Mula said she went out a lot and uh, did a lot of partying. Yeah, that hey, son of a sure. bitch. 24 years old, and she wanted to go out and have a good time. Kids, oh, that, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad things have changed because I, I can't imagine such a slut like that, right? Give me a break. <laughs> she wanted to have a good time at 24 years old. How horrible for her. <laughs> How about this woman's wrestler from the 80s? The Fallen Angel. Let's see Devin's women's wrestling knowledge now. Why are we mad at Devin? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a gimme, Devin. Come on now. I mean, what woman wrestler do you know? They just gave you a clue, numb nuts. Are you asking? What is it? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so confused with the question. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> do, you know, do you know who the fallen angel is from the 80s? Uh, do you know no. who she turned out to, turned out to be? I'm guessing one of these two women. You got the set. What was the next? The word you just said, woman. Woman is that? There is that you who go. It oh. you got it. Great job. All an angel was woman from WCW. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm completely like unfamiliar with any of the '80s women's wrestling or oh, barely any of the any '80s men's wrestling. Any of the '90s wrestling too, right? Time to uh, get out of the learning tree. I'm better in the late '90s. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> that just sounded good, <laughs> um, So uh, one more time back oh. to you, Devin. Sherry Martell misses off the top rope, and Mueller pins her for the win. What kind of finish is this? Who booked this shit? Yeah, honestly, it was uh, it was it was pretty poor. I wasn't a big fan of that in there. But that was a that wasn't just common to women back then. Uh, there was a lot of pins that happened like that back Nikita then. The Dragon Steamboat lived by that move. Yeah. Top rope cross body, baby, for the win. It just it doesn't seem like a big finish. Um, it isn't. I don't know. Well, just going off the top used to be a big deal. <laughs> you know, they didn't <laughs> used to do 450 splashes back then. Right. Uh, and if they missed, it was over because that's real life, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I want to talk a little bit about, I mean, this match, um, there's not much more to say about it. Uh, Mula did win. Uh, it was a non-title match, um, which was mentioned in there. Like, there was no title on the line, right? So yeah, that was that yeah. was weird. But you know, um, so if if you know, I, I got a lot of the a little bit of the history of Mula um, from the dark side of the ring and some other sources, um, and it's not necessarily accurate. Uh, it seems like a lot of uh, uh, stories, but nothing's ever really been confirmed. Uh, like there's stories that she had to sleep her way to the top. Um, but I, 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 we don't know any of that for sure. She had, um, she did take, she was an agent and she did have, I, I, they call it a compound where she trained young wrestlers and she took a piece of their money and they had to pay her with something like 25%, 20%. And then the girl, yeah, 25. And the girls had to pay $300 a month to basically stay there. Um, when they were explaining this, they were explaining this with a lot of anger. Um, I, maybe twenty-five percent is a lot of money. Uh, Three hundred a month is a lot of a lot of money back then. But she was. I mean, it, it works to me like any other agent. You get ten, you get fifteen percent, um, and she probably also provided food for them, training, and everything else. Uh, that what I did get though from this was twenty percent of what, twenty-five percent of what. Uh, there was a couple of the, of the of the ladies that said, we don't know where that 20% came from. Was it 20% of 100? Was it 20% of 40? You know, in the car business, you always have to get paid off of gross because they always say that the owner controls net. So <laughs> he could take his Eagles tickets out of, out of gross if he wants to. Gross can, net can be whatever they want it to be. So I, I kind of get what she's saying there. Um, and then How many uh, hot dogs would twenty five percent be in Boaz, Adam? Well, if you got guaranteed two hot dogs and ten bucks, by the end of the night, you walked out with one hot dog of five dollars and a coffee. <laughs> so that's usually how there we do it, it down here. Uh, and Buddy Lee was Mula's husband. 
there's a story about uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, one of the first African American wrestlers, or the first African American wrestlers, and um, one of her children is is his. This came up in the documentary as well. So there's some things here that come up. Um, Princess Victoria, who we're going to be seeing in the next match. Uh, I'll tell you what, they really painted an ugly picture of her in the documentary. Um, she comes off very angry and basically said she was told to sleep with a guy to, to get booked. Also, she had hurt herself really bad and was continue, they made her continue to work. But then in, in the dark side, they also, she's screaming at her dog in it. And it, and it also made her look really, really bad. It was such a strange, strange moment in the show. I don't know if they were trying to take away her credibility or what. And that's my point here is nothing's been confirmed uh, from what I see about what Mula did. Um, there's probably some truth to some of it. I, I do think she took money. Um, I, I do think she worked the girls hard. But that really, uh, overall, uh, there's no facts uh, from what I see. Um, Adam, you watched it today. What did you think? Well, I mean, can you imagine back then, back in the 70s and 80s, Women's wrestling wasn't really that big. So trying to get five, six, eight, ten women bookings, it's got to be a hard job. So I can understand why she took the money. But just like you said, you know, you don't know how much. 25% of 50 is not much money for anybody. And I just don't think women's wrestling got paid a lot back then. But if she's doing all the bookings, you know, giving you a place to live, training, and all that, I mean, I understand why she might come off as a as a butthole or whatever they want to say about her, but she is doing all the work. I mean, all they're having to do is say, hey, look, I got your book, you go. That's all they got to do. But, I mean, booking, booking for men now is hard when you're just starting out. So I couldn't imagine what it was back then for women back in the 80s, especially when it's like the only, your only route in is through moolah. So it's kind of like you have to go by her rules or you have to. I think Wendy Richter went to, didn't she go to uh, Vince herself? Like went behind Moolah's back and went to Vince herself? Or he came to her, one or the other, right? Yeah. Uh, other than that, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you, you're that's just it. There was no other real options, was there? I mean, like, again, we, I don't have a fact book in front of me, but I mean, it wasn't just women. Men, men were treated this way too. Not maybe necessarily a prostitution type of explanation, but I'm sure they, like you said, about making money and this and that. So uh, that's all I have on, uh, I, I have some more stuff on Mula when we get into our third match. But for now, you know, like I said, um, Wendy Ricker did say something kind of funny that uh, we can talk about in the next in the next match, but I do have some other stuff here. But for now, we'll just, um, unless anybody else has anything on this particular match, I can kick it back to you, James. That appears we're uh, good on that one. Exciting, sen sensational uh, stuff right there. Uh, that, yeah, it's pretty much, uh, I think we covered that match pretty good, pretty decently. Gives us a good outline to, uh, you know, specific uh, area of concentration that we're doing these next uh, three episodes. Um, but, uh, yeah. Anybody have anything exciting they want to talk about? Uh, how about you, Devin? Oh, I got something I can talk about. Here we go. So, uh, immediately after um, we ended uh, recording last week or like 10 days ago me and erica thought uh we could get some uh alone time don't say anything incriminating we still have a live court case going so don't say anything incriminating go on pal oh okay nothing incriminating nothing incriminating but so me and erica thought we could take advantage of our alone time and you know have a little fun so we start our process of doing stuff and, boy, well, I, I bet you turn her on so much. Hey, hey, baby, you start this what y'all blackjack? <laughs> what were y'all doing? Playing poker? Blackjack? What were y'all doing? Trust the process. All right, all right, all right. All right Brad. Philly. We were gonna have... I, mean, I, I love dominoes. Can I play dominoes? I love dominoes. We were going to have sexual intercourse. And then as it's about to start really getting going, we hear this knocking on my front door. And I'm like, uh, let's let's ignore it. And this knocking happens three or four more times. She's like, well, maybe you should get up and check out what this is. So I peek out the window, see it's my grandma. My grandma, she's always calling me for 
coming over for random things, just stopping all the time. I'm like, it's not important. She'll go away. I'll call her in 30 minutes. It'll be all right. 30 minutes, my ass. Sorry. <laughs> 30 minutes. So, what are you doing it 10 times, pal? <laughs> uh, for, I'm 24, Brad. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Very good point. Very good point. Uh, okay. So my grandma does go away. Me and Erica try to resume our intercourse. I just cannot keep it going. Completely, like, the feeling is gone. I be just... a good blue juice, but this would be a perfect. <laughs> <blue juice spot. laughs> I desperately needed blue chew. <laughs> but so we end up just saying, you know what? We'll just call my grandma back, see what she really needed. <laughs> It was just some dresses she picked up at a yard sale for Erica. But, you know, short in the story, I got cock blocked by my own grandmother. Have you been ever, have you been able to perform since? <laughs> no, because it's <gasps> that time of the month now. Uh, oh, so yeah. Okay. Well, it's are now you in, been. Are you in your own head? You guys nowadays? <laughs> what? That stops you guys nowadays? <laughs> well, you got a shower, you got towels. What does stop me, but she just doesn't really want to right now. You know, when that gets in your head, it's probably easier to move my uh, my car with my mind than to have to, <laughs> to get that transformation going. So um, best of luck to you. you Did know, she because... smell anything? Did she ask if you're running a fish market or anything like that? No. no. <laughs> she asked if we just woke up. She was like, did you guys just wake up? I was like, well, we were in bed, but Adam, why are you calling a timeout? Or we have to we have to stop the show? Timeout, timeout. <laughs> <laughs> There's something wrong with this story here. The fact that grandma leaves, and instead of well, we're done for the minute, let's just see what she wants. The fact that you want to try to finish first, then see what grandma wants. That's the problem here. Grandma come over for a reason. Oh, let's just try to finish. Blue chew or no blue chew. We'll call her later. Even though your grandmother's probably like 45, <laughs> the oldest, we'll just call her later. It's no big deal. Let's finish first. Grandma can wait. Come on, sweetheart. I love my grandmother, but nice. she comes over all the time without calling or anything. So well, she, one time she I comes more than you do. What, right? what was she bringing you? It was just two dresses that she bought at a yard sale nice. for Erica. A yard sale dress. That's nice. What are you in Alabama? <laughs> Not northern New York. <laughs> Alabama's it's thrift stores in Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was great. Uh, thanks, Devin. Surprising uh, us with that story. <laughs> here at the Kickout Crew, we're all about empowering women. So <laughs> thanks for that story. <laughs> I think it's your only two episodes, Jesse. I <laughs> hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Shout out to my son. I, I guess if he does, we'll be at Top Guy Weekend. <laughs> What's up, what coach? was that, Coach? I was just saying shout out to my son, Ethan. Just turned 18 and hooked up with two chicks on the cruise. Proud of you, son. No, oh, there you go. That boy. Okay. Uh, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> two chicks at once? I didn't ask. Oh, <laughs> hey yeah, Love woman me. episode, right? Am I right there, James? That is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, so what we got next? I, I don't know. Where do we go from here? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, so talk- we can all look at the outline. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about the ladies from the 80s, but I don't think right now is a really good time to do that. So I want to, I'll bring everybody down for a minute because I do want to talk about something more serious this week. I know normally I um, talk about, tell a story about myself, make fun of myself a little bit, but something happened uh, this week and it, by the time you guys listen to this episode, uh, it'll be next week. Um, Jeff Hardy. Um, unfortunately, Jeff Hardy this week, um, I guess, uh, fell off the wagon. Uh, from what I'm reading from reports, uh, he was pulled over and he blew a two point, uh, point two nine four on the breathalyzer. Now, for those of you at home that don't know who Jeff Hardy is, he's part of the Hardy Boys. He's been around for a long time. However, he's been known to have uh, drug and alcohol problems over the years. Now, I, I want everybody to know this is not funny. I'm not making fun of him in any way. Uh, 
So Tony Khan put out a little, um, Tony Khan, he, so uh, Jeff Hardy works for AEW and he put out a, a message that says, we are uh, able to resume contact with Jeff Hardy this afternoon. AEW does not condone Jeff's alleged behavior. We made it clear to Jeff that we'll assist him in getting treatment for the substance abuse issues, which he has indicated he's open to receiving. In the interim, he is suspended without pay and can only return to AEW upon successfully completing treatment and maintaining sobriety. Um, if you have a loved one or need help, please reach out to SM, S-A-M-H-S-A, and that's the national hotline, um, 800-662-HELP, and uh, that's from Tony Khan. This hits home for me. Uh, believe it or not, there are a lot of similarities um, in my business to the wrestling business. The car business, um, it, it breeds, uh, it has problems. Uh, I worked for a large independent for eight years, not attached to... Um, not attached to a new car store. And we had guys there that were in uh, recovery. Um, there's a lot of other similarities in the car business too, uh, that, uh, just to be a little lighter. Uh, people keep coming back to the same place even though they're told they're never going to. Um, and and uh, saying you uh, have, a, have a boss that's kind of a tyrant at times and then you love him at other times, like a Vince McMahon kind of role, <laughs> very similar. Uh, but we, have, we do have guys that are in recovery. And there are times when the, these guys that are in recovery are actually teaching class or, or helping people are like head of the class. And in my time, uh, in the last three years, I've lost two people uh, to drug overdose that I would have never guessed in a million years were still going through problems. So it is serious. Uh, we wish all the best to Jeff, uh, his brother, Matt, um, and to all those that his family that this is affected. We, you know, we want the best for him and uh, hope he can uh, pull through and get himself back together. I mean, if, yeah. we're honest, if we're going to be honest, you know, going through active, you know, active addiction is it, tough. I've dealt with it for nine years. And, uh, you know, or eight years, I've been sober nine now. But uh, I've dealt with it for eight years. And active addiction is just your brain is in a whole nother level. Unless you've actually been down that road, you don't you don't understand it. And, and I feel bad for him, and he needs help. Uh, and I hope he gets it, because Jeff Hardy's an amazing guy. Uh, but until he's ready to get the help, I, I, I got a bad feeling it won't happen, because that's what I did. I wasn't ready for the help until I made that decision to say, OK, I, I think it's time. And it, it took a lot for me to change my mind. I mean, you got to think, I'm only sober nine years. My kids were 13 and 16. So they, they dealt with some of this. So until he's ready to make that change, unfortunately, active addiction is going to follow him. And it sucks because it's – even when you're sober, there are your, you're always just one decision away from jumping right back into active addiction. It's just one drink, one medication, one whatever your DOC is, you're just one bad decision away from going right back down the hill. And, and I hope he gets – the help he needs, throwing him in a jail cell ain't, ain't the answer at all. That's not going to help him. Uh, I love what Tony Khan did, you know, offering him help. His family needs to get involved. Any loved one in his family, in his life, needs to get involved. Because until he's ready to make that change, it's not going to happen, and it sucks. Because I went down that road, and, it's, and it sucks, man. I hate to see it, because he's such a good guy. So Both parties. Such good guys. I, I hate to see it. Yeah. Well, sorry to bring everybody down for a minute, but I just thought um, it was something I wanted to talk about. And I, I know I usually have a good time on here and usually just make fun of myself, but this week uh, was just a little different. So anyway, best like to you, Jeff. To say, <clears throat> I'd like to say I respect uh, Jeff Hardy's wife because uh, she's she stuck it out. Uh, and the wife of an addict or the girlfriend of an addict is the same because what they have to put up with <laughs> is some of the most disgusting, rude, disrespectful things that a man can do. So to the women of, uh, of that are in relationships with active addicts, I commend you. Don't give up on them. You're the only lifeline that they have left. And eventually in due time, we all pray that they can get through their addiction problems. That's right. 
Very well so, said, brother. Very well uh, said. Having said that, we're going to get this back on track now, uh, James. So, um, Adam, um, let's, uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, there's a lot of women today that we're not talking about um, because, you know, there's only so many matches we can talk about. So uh, would you mind briefly talking about some of the women from the golden age that we maybe not be mentioning today? Well, you know, I did a little bit of research and there's actually more women than I even realized on this list. And I'm sure I might be forgetting some. And if I do, I do apologize. Um, Sorry, Brandy. Angela, it's a lot of names. I mean, it, I got a uh, Misty Blue, Medusa Michelli, which is, you know, Medusa, uh, Baby Doll, uh, Queen Kong, Jamie West, Whitney Hanson, Misty Blue, Electra, Tina Ferrari, Bambi, Miss Elizabeth, uh, California Doll, Candy Devine, Brandy May in Malibu, um, Woman, Fallen Angel, Devin, um, Missy Hyatt, but the, let's see here, Cat LaRue, the Bodyguard, Bodyguard Venus. I think she was one of the bodyguards for the, uh, I think for Linda, for Linda Dallas and Cat LaRue, I think, don't quote me on that. Um, Hollywood from Glow, Vine from Glow, Matilda the Hun, uh, Brandy May, Mountain Fiji, Rock and Robin, Spider Lady, uh, Jaguar, y Yakota, uh, Judy Martin, and Leilani Kai. So we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk a little bit more, Adam, about Glow later in the episode. But you said Tina Ferrara, do you know who that is? Ferrari? I, I know, I know, and I can't remember as soon as you it's tell ivory. me. Gonna... It's, ac it's actually Ivory. And uh, that's where she got her start, Glow. So I just want I, I I had to do I had to do that for you. But let's not forget the great May, let's not forget the great May Young, everyone. Love her. The great the, the great May Young. Oh, she worked from the 50s and 60s though. Yeah, but she still was around. Well, these are the <laughs> these are the ladies that kind of just started in the 80s. I know, and oh, you did a good job. Glow area. Proud of you. That was a good roster, though. I mean, they had yeah. if they were all in some like the same place or even you split them up, that would have been a good roster of ladies. And Adam, the only reason I even mentioned Mae Young is because you can't mention Mula without Mae Young. Because exactly. in the in the nineties and stuff, they, they were uh, side by side all the time. And now we have the Mae Young classic. I still it's still a thing. So uh, we can never stop talking about her. Um, I was gonna kick it to James, but I'm getting two middle fingers again. Uh, oh hey, pal. Welcome back. Yeah, I had to blow my nose. Uh, sorry. Blow your nose on here, man. Everybody knows. Nah, everybody, nah, everybody we already got dogs barking. We already got enough uh, background shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, kicking it to you, man. Are we, uh, is it match two time? Yeah, why not? Match two of three. See, uh, <laughs> we had to, uh, no, no, no. We, uh, we wanted to make sure we cover, uh, on, obviously these matches are short, but we figured that women deserve the respect that, uh, we're going to cover three matches this episode. And, uh, Obviously, uh, three moving forward. Also, I forgot Luna Vashon. I'm sorry. Oh, I love Luna. Oh yeah. She started in '85. I thought she started in '90. She started in '85. So that's my yeah. fault. There's another dark side of the ring about her. Anybody wants to see it? Very good too. That was a sad one, boy. That yeah, was. Yeah. Well, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, match uh, match two. We have <laughs> Wendy Richter. I believe is it a. Uh, Cowgirl Wendy Richter, I believe is how she's introduced. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. on, uh, on that, uh, <laughs> Wendy Richter and Peggy Lee Leather versus Velvet McIntyre and Princess Victoria. This one went down May 5th, 1984. I really don't know where. Did I know go? where this match took place because where? I studied the fans. I studied the fans and looked at their shirts and stuff. It did happen in Philadelphia. I saw four people with a Philly shirt on. I swear, Brad, I was going to text you when I was watching it. Uh, the old school Phillies, uh, Steve Carlton uh, logo. It was amazing. Philadelphia. I don't know if it was a spectrum or whatnot, but May Probably. 5th, May 5th oh. is my son's birthday, too. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, happy, happy birthday on that day, huh? Yeah. Good day. Which, uh, which son? My oldest, Ethan. Oh, Casanova. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this... So uh, the surprising thing about this match is it was a women's tag team championship match. And the fact that those belts existed in the eighties and then pretty much disappeared <laughs> for forever until they, you know, just recently came back and Lord knows that's been booked. Great. They, they were only around for um, like five or six years. 
I think it was 89 is when they were gone for good. It's a strange thing to get rid of, don't you think? A strange yeah. thing to get rid of. I, I don't quite I understand why that's not a thing everywhere. I mean, we don't have that. We don't have it in every organization right now. I wonder how much the pay was for that, too. I mean, if you think about it, women already aren't getting paid that much. So to pay four women, they probably pay them the rate that you would just pay, you know, one guy versus one guy. And then to split Conrad that and then to get a cut taken out of that. Eesh. And Conrad always talks about Vince not liking tag team matches because he has to pay four people. Yep. Well, maybe the champs get four hot dogs. Or do they you have know, to split a hot dog and a Coke? I mean. <laughs> you know, DDP has gone on record to say just because we're on TV doesn't mean we're making money. Yeah. And it is a strange thing. But, yeah. Maxwell. Like, sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> so, you know, it's a strange thing, though. You think these women are on TV, you think they make money. They probably didn't. Um, so uh, I, I got to I got to say this about Princess Victoria, who is very bitter in the uh, again, she's in this match. Very bitter on that uh, on that on that documentary. She's in um, Native American clothing in this. OK, and so I, I, I did a little research and she does have a Native American. That's how it was said. Native American background. Yet. She is billed from Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a miss, right? <laughs> well, Both of them are actually. Since I was just up there in the British in British Columbia last week, there are a, a heavy presence of Eskimos, totem pole. Okay. So there are a, a heavy uh, Native American or Native Canadian. Well, there's a there's a better word for that today, correct? I mean, it's not Native American. I mean, it could yes. be okay. Inuit. It w- would be the. Uh, up in that area, that's the name of the... Because she's really just from Portland. Um, just a heads up. <laughs> so she didn't need to be from uh, British Columbia at all, is what I'm getting at. I, I didn't really understand. So, James, all four horsewomen in one piece, huh? Or all four horsewomen. <laughs> all four... <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting to episode three already. <laughs> all four... <laughs> All four women we are... popped Brad. We popped Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Episode nine. Got him. Ah, uh, where am I? Um, all right. So all four women are in one piece outfits. James, what'd you think of? Uh, what'd you, what did you think of Wendy Richter's? Roll Tide. And uh, <laughs> you can see uh, the way Wendy looks. Obviously, we're not you know sexualizing them or anything like that. But Wendy Richter was definitely. I would. I don't know to say the more attractive, maybe rude to the other three, but she definitely looked the part of a wrestler for sure. You could tell she had that aura about her, like, okay, she's actually a good wrestler. These other three are kind of just like going through it, but she looked a legit part of a wrestler. She had that, uh, that presence, that swagger, I guess you could say. And she looked amazing in that piece that I, uh, forgot how good looking she was. Roll Tide. I mean, mm. cowgirl, Wendy Richter, you have my Texan attention. So Wendy and uh, uh, Princess uh, um, Victoria were both trained by Mula. Uh, the other two, uh, from what I, the research I did, uh, I could not see that they were. However, um, it, again, in that documentary, Peggy Lee is in it and says she loves Mula. So just so you know, there was a lot of contradictory things in that, in that, uh, in that show. I, I have that right, right? Don't I, um, Adam? It was her that said that? Not um, Velvet McIntyre. Okay, I just want to make sure because I, sometimes this thing runs together for me. But Mike, uh, Princess Victoria actually bites to break a hold. What did you think of the aggressiveness in this match? It was interesting. It was different. I mean, you didn't you didn't see it at that time a lot. So I thought it was good. I liked it. And uh, did we talk about the commentary yet, James? We did not. Mean Gene. I, yeah, I was about to say, I believe Mean Gene's on there. You could you could tell that man's voice. Uh, shout out to Mean Gene. Damn good uh, interviewer. Damn good. Uh, I I only knew him as an interviewer, obviously, you know, the stick man stuff. But to hear him on commentary doing this, yeah, he still had the same banter. He was quick-witted. He knew what he was talking about. And uh, I don't think anybody – I think Mean Gene gets overlooked a lot. I know he gets his praise, but just how good he really was at uh, – kind of guiding people and baiting them uh, to say whatever, you know. I really think uh, Mean Gene sets it up pretty good on the uh, commentary. I like it. Very nostalgic here with Mean Gene. Very nostalgic with Pat Patterson in the last match because we didn't hear a lot of their commentary. At least I didn't. Yeah. Um, so nice to hear uh, both of those guys that we, we know. Obviously, we know, but we don't know them necessarily from commentating. Um, 
So, uh, Devin, there is a, a spot in this match. Feel like so Velvet McIntyre kept distracting the referee, but Richter and Lee kept capitalizing. Did you think that was a miss? Well, I don't know. I uh, I don't think it was a miss. What like, was she distracting uh, him for? Like, what was she distracting him to do? Like, I I felt like she was helping them. You didn't see that? When she was on the outside and went to the other corner, wasn't that just to try to point to the ref and say, look, they're double teaming right now? I felt like I felt like she did the distraction, and then they double teamed. But, you know, maybe it was just me uh, making things up. But uh, they were working the – she was definitely working the ref. I, I mean, look, so – when he misses off the top and then, and then they do the distraction. What do you think of, of, what did you think of all the ref distractions in this match? That was common back then though. They made the referees look very stupid back in the eighties. Uh, they they yeah. weren't as athletic. So that kind of went with the time there. And in that match, if you noticed the, the Irish girl, what was her name? McIntyre. Or no, McIntyre. Yeah. He was maybe only in for 30 seconds and got the pin. The first girl took all the beating in the world. So hot tags were even different back then. They didn't even, she didn't clear the ring. There wasn't a whole this, that, and the other. The hot tag happened 30 seconds later, the match was over. So that, I wanted, yeah, I wanted to ask you, Adam, about the hot tag. Um, how important is that to a match? Well, as long as it's built up right, it's, it's really important. Because it gets the crowd back into it. It's, but, I mean, the, you know, what you were talking about a minute ago as far as the distraction, the, the old formula back then is the, you know, the heel kind of taunts the baby face. You know, the bad guy taunts the good guy. Good girl, bad girl, good girl. So the heel kind of taunts the baby face to, to draw them in. And a good heel will step in but won't come in all the way. So the referee will kind of act like he's distracted so the heels can do what they got to do. I don't think Devin McIntyre was really comfortable doing it. Maybe she, maybe she's ain't done it a lot. But um, but the hot tag's got to be built up right. I mean, and that's probably why Devin McIntyre just came in for thirty seconds and won because Princess Victoria took the blunt the whole match. She only got like what five six offensive moves in the whole match. So as long as it's built up right, it's it's very important because it brings the crowd back. Because they're, you know, they're reaching out, reaching out. Come on, tag, tag, cut it off. And then they crawl back to the corner, tag, tag, cut it off. So it builds the suspense. You know, you know, every time, every time it builds the suspense up, they cut it off, and then they finally get that hot tag, and that's when the crowd jumps back in it. House, they call it a house of fire. They come in, you know, bumping everybody until either the either the heel cuts it off, or in this case, Melvin McIntyre, one, two, three, wins the match. So it's pretty important if they do it right. Mike, did you think this match was too stiff? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was, I guess, in a way. It would. I don't know. One girl that did a drop kick, she couldn't get up. So it was like a drop kick to the belly button. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, there was certain spots that were just way off. But <clears throat> it was a what women's did, match. What would you think of the production, Devin? overall like i know the match was not too bad but like the production itself as a guy uh, that's really young you know uh you you're not watching anything like this now you're seeing charlotte flair what did you think of the production of this match yeah i mean like uh the match was really slow i mean they just kept beating um it was uh princess victoria right that they kept beating on yeah, yeah. and then uh mm -hmm. so they, i thought that was just so slow just throughout the whole thing um Wendy Richter and Peggy Lee had really good double team moves, though. I, I enjoyed that, but just, I don't know, the production wasn't too great. And uh, was there any kind of finishing move that someone stole from somebody, Devin? Yeah, well, I seen that. Uh, I really loved the move that uh, Wendy Richter and Peggy Lee did, that leapfrog stun gun. Uh, that just reminded me of Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas in the early two, uh, 2000s doing that move. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so overall, I, I didn't think this was a bad match. Um, you could tell these women are well-trained. I, I, again, I hate to keep putting her over because I don't know if she's a good person or not, but she's not with us anymore to defend herself for sure. But 
Moolah um, seems like she knows what she's doing with uh, training wrestlers. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The drop kicks look good to me. Um, and you know that the drop kicks are from her because you see Moolah do them in a match we're going to be watching next and, and before. And I believe it's um, Calgore, Calgirl, Wendy Richter, that says that she drop kicked Toma, she uh, dropped, like in, uh, in the one documentary. She just kept doing them and doing them and doing them. So overall, I, I thought it was a good match. James, um, you know, I, what's your perspective? Did you think it was a good match or would you just could have done without it? I, it was a good match, I guess. The constant distractions of the referee kind of got to me. It seemed like every five seconds there's a distraction to the referee. It's a bit much for me because uh, it just seemed like a bunch of schmoz shit like the whole time. But, I mean, I didn't mind the match, you know. The uh, the crowd uh, was a little more live for this one compared to our other match. And uh, with all the distractions, I will say that you could hear the shrieking of the crowd, which obviously the women were definitely, like, heavily involved in the distractions and cheering, you know. Uh, I did think it was funny how they cheered for Wendy in the introductions and then booed <laughs> Peggy, and they're on a team together. So I thought right. that was funny. But I don't know. I mean, I pretty much have in my notes, you know, it's just – Scattered yelling and, uh, the you know, you can tell it's a women crowd reacting. Obviously, the guys, you know, pop for the finish and sh uh, shit like that. But, you know, it's women are heavily invested in this, which I guess it sold them on it. And, uh, you know, a bunch of loud yelling, a bunch of uh, they're into it. You can hear them yelling. Who knows what they were calling <laughs> these women? But, yeah, you can tell the women were heavily invested in it. The female fans, that is. We, we, of course, don't know what the build was to this match, really. Coach, were you surprised at who the winner was? No, because I, I, I saw those championship belts, and I was like, oh, they're going to win. I didn't think there would be a uh, title change in a dump like Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> See, they wasn't even on the line for this match either. It was a non-title match. It was a non-title match. It was a non-title non non match again. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, does anybody have anything else they want to add about this match? Well, you can tell the women are Bro, really God. good. They're trained good, but as far as the tag team moves, you can tell they were they were kind of new as far as tag teaming with each other. Um, you know, misdirection type of stuff. Like James said, um, getting the referee's attention too much. A good heel will do it in front of the referee, get that four count, stop, you know. So we don't need all those ref distractions like like James said. But um other than that, I mean, all the women look good. I wish we could have seen more of Evan McIntyre. I just want to let you know, uh, coming into this, I didn't know what to think. But I, I overall, I was much more impressed. I, I, I think the wrestling's pretty good. <laughs> okay. Like, like there's a there's a bad time in wrestling for women. Um, and look, they're not on TV all the time. We know that. They're not maybe taken seriously. We know that, but I, I have to say these women are trained and they, and they look good and, and they're putting it all out there and they're hitting each other hard. Yeah, so they're not, they're not getting a lot of reps either. I mean, they're wrestling one night not. a week, maybe two nights a week. Yeah. So, so I mean, it, but they're at Madison square garden. They're in Philadelphia. I mean, these are, these are places that wrestlers now wish they could wrestle at. And these women did it on a regular basis. So, I mean, I, that didn't, I mean, I always thought that was pretty neat how they were always in Madison Square Garden, always in Philadelphia, and you got these wrestlers nowadays. Their one big bucket list thing is to wrestle at Madison Square Garden. I mean, these women did it all the time. Yep. So, I mean, they're pioneers way before their time. That's true. And to, like, let's say you go out there, you have to, you have, to have some part of uh, talent or else you're going to get booed the fuck out of the building, especially in MSG, you know, the most famous arena of all time. So the fact mm -hmm. that e even though they may not have been look looked down upon and stuff like that, the fact that they were out there and didn't get booed out of the building does have to say something, especially considering the time that they were in. And I'll tell you this, you'll get booed in Philadelphia for absolutely anything. Yeah, you fuckers uh, snowballed yeah. Santa. So, yeah, you you know, know, you'll do anything. Uh, by the way, <laughs> not, not too many know, people know this, but that way that Santa was drunk. But uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Philly fans weren't. Yeah. Like, now, how about, I'll tell you yeah, this. I'll yeah. tell you this. Is, I'll tell you this happened, though. I was at a Phillies game. And a fly ball went up. It was up in the air, and some six-year-old kid missed it. And we booed the living shit out of that kid. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. That yeah. that happened, and I was there. <laughs> I was like, "Oh man, that kid cried." Uh, and they took him out, and we laughed at him. 
in one of the trashiest, <laughs> most classless NFL franchises won a Super Bowl. And what did their fans do to celebrate? Eight horse shit. <laughs> like, you, yeah, YouTube it. Philly fans eat horse shit after the Super Bowl. Didn't deserve the Super Bowl. Act like you've been there, maybe, you know? Hey, well, at least I live for a team that I'm in uh, the area. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I root for the Dallas Cowboys from Oklahoma, and I, I live in uh, I'm Florida. born and raised in Texas, asshole. <laughs> born and raised, yeah. whatever. Shout but, out. Uh, I will say that <laughs> selling of uh, Vince and them did do a great job of uh, selling the match to the home crowd. Uh, or the viewer at home, I guess. Because uh, you can tell the crowd's really not reacting to it. But they are, you know, the commentary is just killing it, which is an ultimate businessman by Vince, obviously promote his own shit. But, I mean, the fact that he could have just mailed it in, but they didn't mail it in on the commentary on this match. And I thought that was really cool, too. Shows respect to the women involved in it also. Yeah, that's right. All right. Speaking of, who's ready for an FMK, huh? There we go. <laughs> so I, I have to say something first, guys. All right. So oh, here we go. Here we, we go. We, we, of course, all listen to Mike Kyoto's mailbag and Polly Bromwell every other Monday on Ad Free Shows. <laughs> anyway, um, third qu- first off, they act like they do these FMKs all the time. OK, they did one from Antonio Santos that had Roseanne Barr in it. We got it. All right. Gross. They don't do them all the time. We times it by 10 already on this one. It's our thing. But anyway, third question, five minutes in the episode, and they're doing an FMK. But not only are they doing a fuck, Mary kill, they're doing it with the fabulous Mula and Mae Young. I'm like, guys, what, what, did you get my notes for the week? And you're actually doing the golden age of women this week? So anyway, uh, this was put together last minute because I had a completely different FMK. And this is going to be, we're going to go a different route. It's not going to be something weird like last time. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. James' dad thinks different to me. That's okay. No problem. Um, uh, Are you married with are, kids? <laughs> but we, we keep it equal on here. We go with uh, the, the ladies and the gentlemen. No judgment. Okay. We're going to go ahead and do singers from the 80s today. All right. And we are okay. not going to make it simple. Okay. We're not going to make it simple. And we're going to start off with it. What do you got? What are you, what are you saying, Mike? Let, you let Devin go last. So, so Devin will have to look these people up, so let him go last. Oh, yeah. he's not, he shouldn't have to look one up if he did any research at all today. All right, so one is Cindy Lauper, Devin. Shocking. Um, <laughs> Tina, T- Tina Turner. Okay. Annie Lennox. <laughs> yeah, what, what, did you, what did you want? What did you, what, who did you do, want do, me to do, 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 do. I don't know that name. All right, well, you can Google it. We have time. Uh, we have time. We're, gonna start, we're gonna we're, we're not gonna sweet start dreams, with dreams, Devin. Sweet dreams. We're gonna start with Coach because he's already he's got smoke coming out of his ears, and for some reason I feel like Adam's already slept with one. Uh, the way he's <laughs> looking at me right now. Go, go ahead, Coach. Peanut Turner was hot. <laughs> <laughs> What's love got to do with it? That song was that song was a bomb. Uh, that does I make her. De- I would definitely marry Tina Turner because I would treat her much better than Ike. <laughs> Wouldn't be hard to treat on it. better than Ike. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll treat her like a lady. Uh, Cindy Lauper, I think I would. Uh, my wife's in the other room. Fuck her all the time. Um, Crazy. Cindy Lauper, you know the the only thing that would stop that is uh, in her later years she's doing a lot of psorias uh, psoriasis videos uh, <laughs> for her medication, so her skin might be a little bit bad, but. I can overdo that. I, I, I can overcome that. Uh, Annie Lennox, by far one of the ugliest uh, <laughs> women I've ever seen. Uh, she got, no, I hate the arrhythmics. I would never listen to that. I hated that back in the day. I still d- dislike the arrhythmics. Uh, it would be a mercy killing for Annie Lennox. Wow. Or Shout Annie out Lennox. to Annie, Annie Lennox, former friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to lose you. <laughs> Adam, uh, I feel like you're chomping at the bit here. Uh, you get real excited about these FMKs. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick it to you, pal. Um, I think I think Coach kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, you can kind of you know between Cindy Lauper, Tina Turner, you can marry F either one. Either way, Annie Lennox. Sorry, sweetheart, you're getting the axe. Thank you. Well, that was easy. Mike? What she said? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Um, I just Googled Lennox. Um, 
So she's out. Wait, 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 wait. Have you seen Lennox, uh, Have you seen any Lennox lately? Has everybody seen that? I just want to make sure. Go ahead, Mike. No, I don't. I didn't. I didn't even know who she was until you said it right now. So she's no, out. Shit. My no. wife coming in with an Annie Lennox song. <laughs> See, there you go. Come on in, She's listening yeah, to the radio. Are we getting, getting running? Uh, go ahead, Mike. I don't know what's going on with All you. Right. So, um, I guess I'll just fuck Tina Turner and marry Cindy Dawford. Like, why not? Yeah, well, because why not, right? right. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's go ahead, Devin. She's, uh, she had a wild tie on her. Yeah. I'm just joining the train. I think I uh, I Google them. Join in this train, pal. <laughs> all right, then I'm gonna marry Tina Turner. That, Great, that's fine <laughs> with me too. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna do the same exact thing. I'll marry Tina Turner, F. Cindy Lauper, and sorry, Annie Lennox. She's oh. the only one I didn't know before this game, so she's got to go. I'm worried that Tina Turner would kick your ass, Devin. She might, but she wouldn't have a reason to. Nah. <clears throat> Ike would show up knocking on the door, and he'd be like, what's going on? I like Turner's here. Let me go into the door. Hang on. Yep. <laughs> James. James. You guys. <sighs> Poor Annie Lennox. Some of them want to use you. Some of them want to get used by you. Not some me. of them want to abuse you. And some of them want to be abused. Sweet dreams are always made of these. Exactly. She wrote, she was the singer of that song. Yeah. yeah. That, that was my own man. I will <laughs> tell you this much. Here's a uh, <laughs> shocking uh, fact for y'all. Me and Tina Turner have the same birthday. Oh, there you go. Which is probably explains her. my lack of luck in love. <laughs> because I share a birthday with a woman who used to get pistol whipped damn near every day. Shout out to the band uh, Pistol Whip and Ike <laughs> in uh, around the Dallas scene. I wonder how they got their name, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm fucking Cindy Lauper because she's crazy. So, you know, I guess I'm fucking marrying Tina. But hey, birthday sex, you know, we're both going to want it. So we're both going to get it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then uh, poor Annie, I guess she's just, uh, you know. <laughs> Well, I'll just tell her, hold your head up, keep moving on. Keep your head up, moving on. Hold your head up, moving on. Keep your head up, <laughs> which is about 90% of that song. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Ah, Tina. I can't believe I have to marry Tina, though. Because I've always been bitter about you like... You don't have uh, to do anything. You don't have to. You know, I will say uh, her rendition, obviously her and Ike's rendition of Proud Mary is uh, pretty good. I'm a CCR fan myself, but you know, I'll give them that one. They started with a good intro. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to say, um, I'm, I am going to change this up, and you're going to find out why at the very end. Oh, God. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to kill Tina Turner. Uh, oh, for no other right. reason than I'm just not Okay, interested. Ike. <laughs> Hard take there. I'm not interested. Uh, I, I agree with, uh, I can't remember who said it that, oh, you did. That uh, I mean, you got you to gotta have, you got to fuck uh, Cindy Lauper, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Time after time. I mean, that's the way I look at it. <laughs> Great song, too. Girls just want to have fun. But I'm going to go ahead and marry Annie Lennox for no other reason except that she is uh, Scottish. Oh, oh that callback. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Oh, you did, huh? You did. All right. All right. Gentlemen time. And Devin, you're first. So you better get your freaking Google machine ready. All right. So we're going to go with male singers from the 80s. We're going to go Axl Rose, Brett Michaels, and Vince Neil. I'm done with you. You didn't even put Michael Bolton on the list. I'm done with you. <laughs> well, because why? Everybody would pick him. You know, I, I can't have everybody marrying Michael Bolton. Because you'd all would marry Michael Bolton. What's wrong <laughs> just with you? you need just, oh, look at Rosie. just for the commercial alone. Appetite of destruction. No Rod Stewart. No, no Michael Bolton. No. Michael Bolton. I went rock-ish. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you kind of went three ladies, too. So I like uh, your theme there. Yes. Devin, do you even know who Vince Neal is? I didn't. I had to Google him. He uh, did operation for dude looks like a lady, too. Fun fact. <laughs> Steven Tyler wrote that song about uh, they thought there were some women at the other end of the bar. <laughs> <And they kinda laughs> <followed> the crew. 
such good shit, man. That is such good shit. Yeah, specifically Vince Neil. They thought it was a chick at the bar. They go there and it's Vince Neil. All right, go ahead, Dev. Oh, uh, Vince Neil, he's gonna have to be killed. Uh, just because I knew least about him. Axel Rose, I'm gonna marry him because uh, you know, Guns and Roses, they're one of the greatest bands of all time. And who was the third choice? I can't even remember. Brett Michaels. Brett Michaels. Poison. I guess I, I guess I'm fucking Brett Michaels. <laughs> Every rose has love, a baby. Thorn, Devin. That was not good answers. Um, all right, coach. Well, I've thought about this long and hard. Hard being the key. Um, <laughs> I've I've always wanted to be inside Pamela Anderson. So the closest to that would be Brett Michaels. So I'd uh, I'd let Brett have a night with me. Just and if he wants to make a team, uh, he can talk to Adam and uh, maybe Adam. Can it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to uh, marry Vince Neil because uh, he's always got a lot of hot girls around him. So uh, he has a bunch of rats and uh, Axl Rose. I, I, I do like his music, but uh, process of elimination, you got to go. Uh, yep, not for me. All right. Uh, Adam? I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. Axel oh, Rose, yeah. I'm marrying him. So that way he can, he can sing to me every night. Brett Michaels is a dirty hoe. <laughs> so I'm not marrying him because he'll probably cheat on me because he had Rock of Love and slept with all them ladies. So he'd be like a F him and go, and then just if uh, Vince Neil, sorry, buddy, you're going. Oh, mm. Mike Whitaker. All right, well, I'm gonna kill Vince Neil. Um, Any reason? Because... No, no reason. It's because I don't. Yeah. You don't no. find him attractive. I'm gonna kill him because it's it, just not that attractive, is... Brad. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> um. Axel Rose, I am going to marry because God, I love Guns and Roses. <laughs> and uh, Brett Michael, I'll just, you know, I'd do a one night stand with him. It'd work. I'd fuck him. Give <laughs> me <Senior> protection. <laughs> All right, uh, James. Vince Neal's just a little overweight for me. Oh, uh, it's your body oh, shape. Fat That's I can't handle all, all that all loving. Dad bods in a room. No I matter what size, all these are beautiful. I've got the, the dad Vince bod. Neal's I don't want to hear it. Just, I can't bitch. handle all that loving. Uh, a freaking body shaming. That's all we need yeah. on this show. Now, Thanks for yeah. yeah. about the 80s. Be canceled right? before you know if it. If we're talking about Vince Neal from the 80s, then it's going to be a different story. Listen, I didn't tell you he was today. I didn't say anything. You can be any Vince Neal you want. Are we talking about Tina Turner today, pre Ike or post Ike? No, it's I'm not like Tina Turner pre Ike. It's not, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not Jack Nicholson 1979 or Jack Nicholson today, right? From oh, uh, that's the case. Shout I'm out Billy Madison. <laughs> Jack Nicholson will be laying right beside me if we're talking about the 80s now. We're talking about Batman, Joker, yeah. And he'd take you to Laker games. Yeah. yeah. And that's, as good, man, that's as good as it gets. <laughs> okay. right, James. I'm, I'm just an actual <laughs> Rose fan anyway, so I'll just process the nation Vince Neal's out. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. I guess I got to kill Vince Neal because uh, one of their very first songs is uh, When I Get High, I Get High on Speed. And I don't really, uh, you know, we don't need that in our lives uh, for sure. Yeah. I will say Home Sweet Home is probably one of my favorite songs of all time because that's fucking awesome. But uh, hmm, let's see. So Vince Neal's out. I guess I'm fucking Brett Michaels because he serenade me once and then get the hell on with himself. Uh, and I'm marrying Axel uh, because number one, Guns N' Roses is badass. Number two, the royalties, baby. They have to make more royalties than the other two. I mean, look at Rosie. He has a shirt. That shirt still sells today. People still buy that album. You know, people still Actually, regard them in high right. regard, you know, revere this them. This is a shout out to Paul Bromwell. This oh, is that the Save by the Pod? Man? Not shirt. Oh. Uh, for all you old fans, they, they well, made... see, case in point, they didn't mock a uh, Motley Crue album. They didn't mock a Poison cover, Unskinny Bop. You know, all night and day. Unskinny Bop. I, I, I look. I love Poison. What's that what one, uh, talk dirty to me. That's their best song. I, I like Poison. Yeah. I mean, 
that was my time, man. You know, um, every rose has its thorn. Shout yeah. out to C. Deville. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess uh, another thing. What the thing fuck about are we Doc talking Mary about, Devin? I mean, I mean, if we're I'm talking lost. about Motley Crue, we're going to be talking about Nikki Six, not Vince Car. I mean, Vince Neal. I'm sorry. Talking about Motley Crue, we're talking about Tommy Lee, another man that's been inside uh, oh, a homegirl. You have fun with that one. That's too much for me. Oh, Pamela. Right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and kill Vince Neal, too. This is so. Uh, this my husband. Muster. Oh, but, I'm gonna, sweet but I am going to marry uh, I'm going to marry Brett Michaels because, you know, I watched the show Rock of Love. Is that what it was? Yeah, Rock of Love. I was down. You know, and, you know, I know he's bald under there. OK, that hair was attached. <laughs> that hair was attached to the do rag. I love it. Club. That, hair, that is a hair club for men special if I've ever seen <laughs> it. And then uh, what was I doing? Was I marrying him? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh this fuck Axel because you know I still can say I did and maybe I get to meet Slash right Badass. I would marry Axel and make Slash my my best man <laughs> how cool was he you know what a badass hey, man Brett. what a badass man they were <laughs> they were really on hey, Brett, you mind if I um add on at all to this FMK you know what um I'm open to that hey, Thanks, it's your Mike. show Mike it's your show go ahead <laughs> well, you know it's Brad's FMK. It's Brad's show. You know, I just figured I'd ask. I have open suggestions but that I ignore. We we had um a few comments about Meg. I guess it was last week or week before when we had her on there. So I want to ask you guys. We're gonna do a little different, a threesome. Oh. And what I want to do with this one? <laughs> see, Adam. This is an RKL out of nowhere, huh? My phone, my, I got my phone. So on we got. There. And we'll go back with the Meg. So we got Peter up. Griffin and his wife, um, whatever Lois. his wife's name is. Lois. Lois. Yeah, Peter, Peter Griffin, Lois. We got Homer Simpson and Marge Simpson. And then we got Hank Hill and Peggy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Very good, Mike. I don't hate it. I will say King of the Hill pretty much nails Texas to a T. Like, I love that <laughs> show. They pretty much get the whole Texas vibe down pretty good. Boom hour. So, <laughs> so um, Devin, what do you think? You want me to go first? Always. All right. Yes. Unless you got to Google. No, I don't have to Google these three. Yeah, these three God. are easy. Yeah, they've stayed the same age for 30 years. So, so threesome, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I choose Family Guy's two out of those. I guess we're all nodding. Sleep with <laughs> Lois and Peter. I don't know. FMK. Who are you gonna marry? Who are you gonna kill? Oh, okay, okay. And then, uh, yeah. are right, they Mormon? So... Well, they're already married. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it works. <laughs> you... Going in. Your sister, sister we, we live in Utah. Okay. You know? We live in Utah. <laughs> All right, I'm a, I would fuck Lois and Peter. They're just my fun. I'll just have a fun threesome with them. Um, I'm gonna have to kill Hank Hill and uh, Peggy, just because I don't think I could put up with them for too long. Yankee and then, motherfucker. So Thank and you. then I'm marrying Homer and Marge because oh. I think. Marge is gonna take care of the house, and I'm gonna just get drunk and hang out with uh, Homer all the time. There you uh, go. Coach, I agree, with, I agree with Devin. Same answers. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, because I'm, I live in the South, I deal with Hank Hills all the time. My <laughs> family, half my family's Hank Hills. So, <laughs> bye. I'm done dealing with you. I have a hard time uh, conceptualizing. Hooking up with a cartoon character, <laughs> you know. Uh, I'll, I would just say this: Marge is a freak. I know that by looking at her hair. Uh, any woman that keeps a hairstyle like that, she's down for whatever. So, I think uh, Homer would pass out. So I think it would just end up being Marge and I. So that's that would be my uh, F. Uh, Mary. Uh, I like Hank and whatever his wife's name. Peggy. Uh, yeah, he's good with his hands. He can uh, fix things, cars. Uh, 
you know, he, he can definitely keep the appearance of the house well. Uh, he's got a set crew in the alley, I think. He's got his boys that he always hangs out with. So I got a, a, a group of friends already. And uh, uh, the other two, I never watched that show. So they got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Brad? All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to marry um, Hank and his wife because... Yeah, did you ever see the episode where Hank couldn't take a shit? He was constipated, and he was out on the tractor all day, and he was just riding the tractor trying to get the shit to, to, to come out. Come well, finally, finally, it happened. I thought finally that was Elvis. Happened. Finally, it happened. Come on, come on. And uh, you hear him flush the toilet, and his wife's like, "Yeah, that that that's where it's at. You know, that's where I'm at. Okay, that's where I'm at. I'm in that house. Okay, but I am gonna get freaky with Lois and uh, Peter." And I'm going to go ahead and kill. I, I, I don't even. I first off, I don't even know what the Simpsons are. They're not human. They have four fingers. Uh, they're they're yellow. The blue beehive hair it doesn't do it for me. Homer's a pain in the ass. I liked it when he got the wig, the hair club, and everybody listened to him because they only listen to guys with hair. But uh, you know, then when he took the hair off, I was like, why is everybody talking to this? Why is everybody listening to this bald guy? He doesn't know. Good shit. Um, I understand that. Uh, you know, also the Simpsons have been going on for like 35 years now. I don't got that kind of time, so I'm going to go ahead and kill them and just try to end that series. Damn. Um, yeah. What about you, James? Uh, I'm marrying Lois because as a bigger guy myself, I believe every Peter Griffin needs a Lois, you know what I'm saying? So I respect the fact that she <laughs> likes the uh, bigger guys, so definitely got to get with her. You know, she'll stick around. Uh, I guess I'm fucking the hills, you know. Okay. Because I don't know why, really, but uh, <laughs> why does that sound Homer, like a scary movie? That sounds like really name of a scary movie. I don't want to kill Homer because me and him, you know, like just get drunk. You and him what? Stuff. You and him what? <laughs> get drunk all day, you know, hang out, duff beer, you know. I probably not like anymore. duff beer. Not anymore. Good new job, by the way. Shout out, James. New job. Yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, Three a.m. Going to be fun stuff. Hey. Oh, At least sad. we could tape earlier now. That, that's what when the owners <laughs> own the place, they have to wake up early. Anyway, sorry, buddy. Oh yeah, but no, that's a. Uh, yeah, I guess just the main thing is fucking Lois. Yeah, I, I, guess, agree I agree with that hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, yeah. Okay, so and then uh, mine is, I am killing Hank because I'm the grill man around here, uh, so he ain't. Taking <laughs> And you, and he you start calling propane. He, yeah, he's right? propane. I'm not about propane. Propane's good every now and then, but I'll stick with JR. You Quick use charcoal eat. in the south, damn it. Right? You yeah. don't bastardize he's your smoke, meat by using smoke it here. Smoke. Yeah. If, if I wanted some quick and easy out there in the oven. We call but, Uber uh, Eats here. If I want something quick or, and easy, I can make a, make a trip down the street. <laughs> right. So Hank is out. Um, I guess it's well. I mean, I, I decided, and I didn't even realize it. I'm gonna fuck Lois and Peter because, like you said, Lois is fire, <laughs> and I'm gonna marry. Literally. Um, literally, yeah, she's fire. <laughs> I'm gonna marry. I'm gonna marry the Simpsons. Fuck it, marry the Simpsons. I'm gonna be. I want to be a Simpson, so I'm gonna marry the Simpsons. I love that episode of. Uh... Um, Wait a minute. Into the hill where they're grilling, and uh, they're all just standing around the grill like you're taking too long. You're taking too long. That's a great I did show. some research on Lois. That's a dude's voice. I'm looking it up right here. Uh, yeah, and you know what? Bart's a woman's voice. Man. Yeah. You know, Bart's a middle-aged woman. Bart's Bart's woman. woman. <laughs> you know. Things happen. No, Lois is a bird. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Coach. <laughs> Hey, Very well done, Mike Whitaker. Thanks for uh, yeah. adding that. To hey, the thank office. you for adding that one there. Wait, here's another thing I've researched thanks to Google. Lois is a hoe. According to this, it said that she hooked up with the Jay Giles band, Daryl Hall, and the pyro guy from White Snake, and she did Gene Simmons. Was that from the show? Yeah, it's oh, been yeah. on for 20 some <laughs> years, so she's had some affairs. Wow. Alex Borstein is a woman. 
<laughs> she's a Canadian. She's a woman. I, Adam, I am so glad we got that corrected before we got off here because I think if other things we talked about, we would have been tortured like over that one. Oh yeah. Okay. God, you got that right. I, I can't. I am so happy you figured that out. Yeah, that's uh, uh, My blood runs I didn't really cold. know. I wasn't even paying attention. I was half. Yeah, like, she's oh, been studying my life, I believe. So, are you telling me centerfolds written about Lois? Yes. Maybe. Or something else. She Maybe. With the band. <laughs> well, I'm looking at I've this other girl, Francine <laughs> Smith, an American dad. She's pretty cute. Eric, what are we doing? Bob's my angel is My angel is a centerfold. Um, Futurama. Hey, Kanye had a <laughs> Kanye <laughs> had a lyric one time. Uh, got staples on my dick. Why? Fucking centerfolds. <laughs> like it. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> So glad we're talking about women's uh, wrestling. You know it. Your show. <laughs> yeah, not, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so thank you for that, Mike. That was fun. Um, no, next time, just, just try to remember <laughs> to put on. Don't ask about cartoon characters anymore. That's that. That's I, a I'm whole. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm okay with Jessica Rabbit. So just so you know, I'm good with her. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's true. Um. So. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, James. Go ahead, and um, I'm going to kick it to you for the next match, but I, uh, it's going to go to Coach after that. Well, we have uh, up next part three of three of today's episode: Wendy Richter versus Fabulous Moolah. It is from the Brawl to End It All, July 23rd, 1984, which I believe is the uh, Rock and Wrestling era. So I'm going to shoot it on down the line to the guys to you know kick us into that coach uh, why don't you give us a uh, a brief history of the tell us about what's going on in the time period now and what rock and wrestling was well i was t i was 10 years old and girls just want to have fun was one of the hottest videos in the country and that video um featured captain lou albano now before cindy ever thought about getting into wrestling she hired lou just for the video. And the and then they developed a relationship, this, that, and the other, platonic. And uh, Cindy thought, you know what? WWE is big. My song is big. Let's group together and let's make a union and we can make a lot of money together. MTV was primo in 84. If you were a teenager, a 10 year old, any type of kid, you had MTV. Because you had cable, uh, cable just came out, but you still only had about 15 channels. So MTV featured it. We saw our wrestlers on, on MTV. Plus, one of the greatest cartoons of all time uh, on Saturday morning, the rock and wrestling cartoon. Man, we saw the Junkyard Dog. We saw the Iron Sheik, Hulk Hogan, uh, Paul Orndorff, Roddy Piper, all the guys. And it was... Uh, it was big, and that was the catalyst, I believe, for where we are today. Because without that uh, rock and wrestling, Hulk Hogan generation, who knows where we would have been? Because that's when wrestling truly became mainstream. Uh, because before it was, you know, regional, but this was the first time nationally that wrestling had a platform. Well said, Coach. You know what puts this in perspective is last week we talked to, when you were um, in Alaska. We talked about um, the Ric Flair match. I mean, think about that compared to what's going on here right now. This is the same time. And what's going on with the rock and wrestling and what the WWF is doing compared to what was going on on the other channels. Uh, just amazing. But uh, thank you so much for that, Coach. Oh, and, and one of the greatest scenes, Devin, if you can go back, I don't know exactly which show it's on. But uh, when, when they broke the, the record over the head, the platinum record, bam, that was awesome i mean everybody was fired up we were talking about it at school um people were tearing their shirts off like hulk hogan and women's wrestling was solidified right there the ladies of today the Britt bakers the sasha banks the charlottes they need to thank wendy richter cindy lopper moolah uh captain lou because they gave women's wrestling credibility it was the first time that women were put on top. 
And it took them another 30 years to have a woman's main event like we had back in 84. Amazing, so it, right, Coach? Yeah, it, it, 1985. It was a slow process, event. but eventually we got there because of the pioneers that we had in, in the uh, 80s. So, Coach, explain to me why Cindy Lauper's not in the Hall of Fame. That's a great question. Um, Drew Big Carey, right? uh, Cindy Lauper, uh, Donald Trump, Cindy Lauper. Doesn't make sense to me. You're right. I didn't know. I thought that was a no brainer. You know, we need to start a movement like they did uh, with the Bellas back uh, whenever they did that really kicked off the champ, the Divas Championship era. We need to get Cindy Lauper in the Hall of Fame. We need our listeners to uh, hashtag Cindy Lauper WWE Hall of Fame 2023. Let's make it happen. You heard it here, folks. Kickout Crew is going to start the movement to get Cindy Lauper into the Hall of Fame. And it starts right here at this match. Uh, what a big fight feel this had. OK, there was chaos in the ring, chaos between Captain Lou Albano from the fabulous, the fabulous moolah from Cindy Lauper, Wendy Richter. What chaos in the ring, excitement outside. It was the rumble in the jungle, was it? No, it wasn't. Yeah. But it felt like it was something like that. Um, who are the announcers today there, James? Mother, you know, uh, Vince <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this is actually the only one I didn't have it written down on. Yeah, that's not correct at all. All right, right. Gorilla, <laughs> <is> gorilla, <laughs> is gorilla Monsoon, Gene Okerlund, and how are yeah. people doing Yeah, that? yeah, I was going to say Gene and Gorilla. Yeah, Gorilla Monsoon, me, Gene Okerlund, with Howard Finkel on the mic. Uh, it really Can't did have a big get butchered over that. We're not going to get butchered. We corrected ourselves. Yeah, true. Do you know um, this is the only match that was shown on TV that night? Out yeah. of the 11 matches of the whole show, this is the only one televised? I did not know that. Um, thank you for that, though, Adam, because that, that's good to know, because this was actually, if you look on, this is on YouTube, because they did take it off uh, the, at, at first at WWE Network, now Peacock, because of the controversy with Mola. Uh, it was on there, and now it's not. So you can only get this on, um, as far as I know, YouTube. And it says two hours and 42 minutes. Well, this match is only about total entrances, exits, whatever, 19 minutes. So um, I, I only watched this, of course, but, and it was the main event, correct? Well, yes. see, here's the card. It was Adrian Adonis, Dick Murdoch for uh, for the uh, WWF Tag Team Championships against Sergeant Slaughter, Terry Daniels, and even Hulk Hogan de defended the title, the World Championship, against Greg Valentine. I mean, there's a couple of actually title matches on this card, but the only one that was televised was the women's title match. It's a different time. I mean, I guess we'd have to look at it as this was 1985. This event uh, also got a 9.0 Nielsen rating. No, oh gosh, can you imagine? Um, what do you think of the crowd reactions here, James? Uh, well, at the beginning, if you notice uh, in the background, all the photographers and stuff are just straight up. I mean, everybody's paying attention to Cindy Lauper right at the beginning. Their paparazzi's taking pictures. The camera even, you know, finally after uh, Gorilla kind of mentioned something, the camera finally cuts to Cindy because you can tell the whole crowd is just like looking sideways. So it's kind of weird to, uh, you know, that. So shout out to Gorilla to kind of direct to the camera like hey you might as well fucking put it on her everybody's looking at her anyway um i do like uh speaking of the hall of fame thing real quick uh i don't think there was a more influential celebrity than cindy lopper especially around this time period and that kind of did put wwf on the forefront with the rock and wrestling so for her not to be in but other people that we named to be in i don't think they had quite the influence or reach that cindy lopper did with uh this 80s era wrestling but uh back to that the and, crowd, and, uh, uh, I, I, I'd be remiss to say this, but I believe that this event helped lead to the first WrestleMania. Yeah. Oh, because yeah. here's what happened. Uh, after that event, about seven or eight months later, in 1985, they had the war to settle the score. Now, Cindy Lauper moved on to Hulk Hogan. Uh, she helped Hulk Hogan beat Roddy Piper in the main event. And Moolah got her revenge over Richter by managing Leilani Kai to victory. And that happened in February, which was about one month before WrestleMania won. And we know that uh, without WrestleMania one, I know they invested a lot of money in that. I know they invested a lot of money in three. Two was a flop. We wouldn't be where we're at today. So 
I would say, without a shadow of a doubt, this event and the women's movement in 84 and 85 really put the rocket boosters on WWE. And it also put the coach, rocket boosters on MTV. Like with Coach, this right here to me, and I watched a couple a little bit on this whole pay-per-view thing or whatever it was at the time. It felt like a WrestleMania back then. I mean, with the with what they had going on, it it seemed like a WrestleMania. That's what I thought I was watching. Yeah. So with you saying it kicked off WrestleMania, I I totally agree with you on that one because that's what this had in store the whole time for everything on it. And in fact, Antonio Inoki was on this card. Yeah. Uh, he won the Battle Royal. I mean, it was huge. It had the stars of the stars. So what happened? What happened after this? Like, they, they, pushed, they pushed this women's division to the top of the card in a, in, a, in a major show. And then what? On WrestleMania 1, there's one match for how long? And it's not Moolah. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. And especially when you say it's got a 9.0 rating on Nielsen. Yeah, it was the highest rated. It was the most watched uh, event ever on MTV. Ever. No, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I have none of this in my notes right now, guys, just so you know. I did not know what you were about to say. I didn't know what you were about to say, but this is what I'm talking about. 9.0 rating on freaking MTV. A non, a non, uh, it's cable. Yeah. A music. Back then, music back then it was different. Back then, cable was different. Not everybody had cable in 85. Um, right. I had and, more channels than probably 84. Um, yeah. I, I'm yeah. saying, look, what happened that they didn't push it from this with a 9.0 rating? Is it because of the entertainment factor not being able to be there every time? I don't know. I, I don't know. It'd be a great question um, for someone. I think, I think this is just pure speculation, but I think Vince uh, capitalized on the fame and the popularity of Cindy Lauper and got everything out of her. Uh, and then, you know, the women's matches were kind of secondary. I mean, Again, I love the match, but a lot of people with that 9.0 rating just tuned in to see Cindy Lauper. That's how big she was. Yeah, but they just but people just tuned into WrestleMania just to see Logan Paul. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I I don't know. I, I mean, there's always been celebrities in, in WWF WWE. Anyway, uh, yeah, my WrestleMania one, the women's match, Wendy Richter versus Aloni Kyle was only six minutes, fourteen seconds. That's all. Yeah, and I included entrances, by the way. Yeah, right. But and, you know, and uh, right, and one match, Mula wasn't in it. This is crazy, by the way. Um, but yeah, right. And then there's many WrestleManias don't have a women's match. Um, we're going to go, like I said, uh, everybody, we're going to go down this, this road. Uh, and there are many WrestleManias without women's matches. Um, there's some Royal Rumbles that have them, uh, and so forth, but it is, it's crazy. Um, so Adam, let's talk about some of the wrestling in the match. If you wouldn't mind, um, the snap mares from Mula. Uh, what did you think of, of Mula's in-ring style in this match? Did you think she was over aggressive? I, I think since she was in her sixties right here, 62. I think she kind of went out there it's like show, showing everybody that she has something to prove because she's going up against Wendy Richter, the one that WWF has been pushing this whole time. So I think she went out there. She was dirty heel in this match. And she went out there proving a point. Look, I'm 62. I can still whoop this young girl if I want to. I think she's out there proving a point that night. You know, and uh, Richter working body parts in this um, happened throughout the match. Lula punches. I just have a lot of notes here, guys, and I'm going to get to you all. Lula punches look very stiff, um, parading around the ring. Hey, Mike, do you think Mula is the dirtiest player in the game, or is it Ric Flair? Oh, I think this match. I mean, just tell me what you think. After watching this match, I'd say Mula, but it's one of those things. Back, you know, was it her just playing the game, or was it her being? pissed off that she was no longer number one. There was people coming for that spot. And that's kind of where I've seen it. Like there was people coming for her spot. They were coming, they were going to be, you know, women's champion. They were going to be above her. And I think she did it dirty just to be dirty. Not. I would, I would love to talk to her, you know, because she's 62, 63 here. Did she uh -oh. not want did she not want more for the women's division? I, see, I know what you're saying, Mike, and I know what I hear, and I know what this documentary told us, but why wouldn't she want more for the women's division? She's 62 years old. Like, 
like at some point you have to lose. I, I think she she still want to be on top. She yeah. still want to be the student, the above top, the teacher, woman. top deal. Yes. she wanted to do that. She yeah, she didn't want the student going over the teacher. She didn't like. I'm, it's hard. I was like, I didn't watch it at the time, of course, because I was. We, want, born we saw the so we long. saw the pre-fight interview with Albano, and she said she was um, champion for what, almost thirty years. Thirty, and, yeah. 20, Twenty-eight years, oh. I think I got. Twenty-nine years. I'm gonna bring this into uh, something else. Okay, let's talk about um, late night, late seventies. Um, I'm watching a show now on HBO, and I'm a little far, far behind. If you guys have seen, it, it's called Winning Time. Loved and, it. And winning, yeah, winning times about the LA Lakers about, about the time when they get Magic Johnson. And you got Jerry Buss that goes to um, Red. Um, is that right? Red Auerbach? Am I saying yeah, that right? Got, yeah, the Hades. Okay. There's a point where he goes to him, and I think the Celtics have won seven straight championships at this time. And, and the NBA's failing from, from this show. All right, listen, it's not completely factual, but they're failing because who wants to see the same guy win every time? And Jerry Buss says to him, you know, we can really help each other out and we can make this organization great if we're both great i you can't have the same person winning every time so that's just i i, I know what you're saying mike about that she didn't want her spot taken away man 63 years old 62 years old at some point you got to give it up right like <laughs> but you're right I, she was angry because we're going to talk about something after this match that happened that proves it um so uh I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I, I, I think also, I think also maybe <laughs> since she, you know, she helped train Wendy Richter, maybe she's thinking, well, and I'm, I'm saying it's just my opinion. Maybe she was thinking, well, if she's champion of WWF, I can't book her out because WWF will. So maybe she's thinking she might be losing money if she's losing Wendy Richter, maybe. True. But Moolah got the last is. laugh. Moolah got the last laugh because a uh, year and a half later at WrestleMania 2, minute and 25 squash match against Velvet McIntyre to win the title back. In a minute and 25, she she got her uh she got it back and she became champ again in uh 86. 64 years old. Well, we're gonna actually go back a second now because you've just mentioned something very interesting. And I, I was gonna say this to the end, but I'm gonna go to Devin. Devin, the original screw job. Go. Yeah, I had no idea about a screwdriver at all other than the Bret Hart Shawn Michaels one until we uh, looked into this. But I, I don't know it. anything about it. All right, so <laughs> I thought I thought he did. <laughs> hey, great what job, Brad, right? All right, so Back um, <laughs> let's not go to dates here. I don't have dates in particular, but um, Mula came out in disguise. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, as the some kind of spider. Does anybody know what kind of spider it was? Spider Woman. Black Widow. Black Widow. I thought. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was Black Widow. So spider the Black Girl. Widow, she came out and um, in disguise, and they didn't know who she was. Um, if you watch the documentary, everybody knew who she was, and she was very stiff with Wendy Ricker and uh, won the championship, uh, but it wasn't legit at all. So. What I'm getting at here is that um, it did happen. The original screw job was um, was Mula over Wendy Richter, and um, according to some, Wendy should have known. According to Wendy, she did not know, and it, it's just very, very similar to uh, what happened many, many year, years down the road. She was called Spider Lady, um, Spider Lady. and uh, we're still not sure if it was a work or a shoot or what. Um, according to Wendy Richter, no, but. Uh, if you watch the documentary at all, they're like, it's everybody in the freaking arena knew, according to them. So uh, thanks, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think, too, on that same thing, they said if anybody was going to be able to do it, it was Mulan, correct? Like, mm. if it's like physical, I mean, if she was going to be, if somebody was going to do it, it was going to be Mulan that was going to do it. So her and her, what, 60s or 70s, beating the shit out of somebody in their 20s and 30s that gives somebody you know she's a grandma you don't want to mess with <laughs> i mean plain and, simple. No, and she looks and she looks like a grandma you know I, and she I, does, I, even back in the 80 like 82 in that first yeah. match that's that's what she looked like the lunch lady to me the grandma lunch lady sitting out yeah. back you know 
making everybody's kids and aunts smoking a cigarette. That, that's I only think what this, she's this, about. this works as a heel because um, she's tough to root for. Uh, and then later down the road, she she was more of a baby face because she was your she really was a grandma at eighty. She was in her eighties. Um, let's go and, to the but, so, there was a lot of good selling in this match. Um, there was a lot of good matches. Uh, Devin, real quick, what's your favorite Cindy Lauper song? Uh, the only one I know. Girls just want to have fun. <laughs> that's, that's what I knew the answer to that. Um, there's a full Nelson from Richter. Mula looks like she's very limp in it. Uh, Lopper hits Mula with uh, what was that she hit her with anyway? Does anybody know what that was? Uh, that 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 item because they never really mention it in the match. She actually hit her with a, like something at the end there. Something she yellow. From her bra area, it was like an end of a spoon wrapped wrapped yeah, up. But I, I didn't know what it was. What it was. Um, drop kick, perfect uh, suplex by Richter, rolling around the ring. Uh, you know, and there's there's something that happens in this match that happens in the first match. Um, that same catapult pulling him back in, uh, exact same thing. So you know, it's all the training from Mula. Uh, that that's what brings this thing full circle to me. Is Mula uh, trained, uh, obviously trained Richter, obviously trained Sherry Martel because that was the exact same move. And they also had a ref. Uh, they also had like a ref moment. So a lot of hair pulling. I think Mula still moves great around the ring. Um, I couldn't believe that Mula refused to pin uh, in the match. It was a very late in the match to pull that nonsense, I thought. Uh, and then, of course, the weird ending. Um, now, uh, I don't remember this match very much. Did you guys think Mula won? Any of you? I don't, I don't care which one. No, I didn't. You talking about like right at the initial? Yeah, uh... the end. The end. When yeah, Mula was first, head of I thought, I mean, you got to think back in this uh, time period, they probably didn't have a Jumbotron uh, showing all this shit. So to be up close, to see the fuck finish like that, I bet the people further back had no clue what the fuck was happening. Well, I had no fucking clue. Yeah. So, I thought Mula um, won. Yeah. What was that, Devin? I thought Mula yeah. won as yeah. soon as the bell rang. So I didn't realize all four, four shoulders were down until uh, you, the replay, which I thought Gorilla Monsoon sold like a champ. Uh, great job by Mula with the drop kick to the referee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think their drop kicks. Uh, she obviously teaches drop kicks. Um, going back to what uh, Wendy Richter said, she said she drop kicked till she died because of Mula. And um, uh, Wendy gets the win, big win. Um, and we were going to talk about it later, but then there was the screw job later down the road where uh, Wendy talks about it on the dark side of the ring that she didn't know she was going to lose that night. And uh, you know what? Who knows? I, I still I, not, I'm still not sure about the Bret Hart thing, honestly. I, so. I, I, one spot I. I noticed on here that like got my attention was when Mula got tangled up in the ropes, but she got tangled in the ropes by her feet. I thought that was a good little thing going on on that. Like we don't see we don't see that now. Nowadays, if they get tangled up, they're getting tangled up with their arms, anything else. But with her getting tangled up with her feet, I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. The ref took forever to get her untangled, too. <laughs> yeah, it took him forever to get her untangled. I mean, she was stuck there. And it was it was different. And I don't remember another time that it's ever happened since then. Like that somebody got tangled up with their feet. So overall, everybody, um, you know, the breakdown of these matches was secondary to us today. Uh, we wanted to talk about the time and about the changes. Like we're going to be talking about the change throughout time, and the matches itself. Just talking, breaking down moves and stuff. We weren't. We we're going to do it a little bit, like we did, but that wasn't what the focus was today. So, yes, um, Wendy Ricker, Wendy Richter, and about the time and uh, rock and wrestling. Everything was. Um, that that's what this this match. We weren't going to even do a third match, but I, I felt like, and uh, all the guys agreed. We all agreed together that. We couldn't really do this show without talking about that match because it was so important to the time of rock and wrestling and to the golden age of wrestling. And uh, does anybody have anything else to add to this match? Uh, I think I noticed, this was. I noticed Moolah was the second person to do the Spider Lady gimmick. There was, I can't remember the lady's name, but there was one other lady that that uh, she did she did a couple of matches against Wendy Richter a year or so beforehand, I think, but. I know Moolah was the second person to use the Spider Lady gimmick. Got it. 
I knew a third one in San Francisco, a stripper by the name of Spider at the Casbah Strip Club. Man, she was great back in 88. That's uh, That was a good time. What was that, Devin? I just thought this was the better match of the three. Um, it was kind of like the culmination for the first two matches. We kind of got to see Moolah, and then we got to see a little bit of Wendy Richter in the tag match. I, just, I really liked it. It was kind of like a blow-off for us. Yeah, I agree. Um, Would you have watched this when you were a kid, Devin? If it was, if this match was in 2022, the same format, same style, same lighting, would you have been a wrestling fan watching that? Yeah, yeah, I don't watch this. Why not? You know, substitute the Cindy Loppers with I don't know a Iggy Azalea or someone now. Yeah. Cardi B. As Cardi much B. as we say, there we go. as much as we say this was on cable, there was only probably 13 channels at the time. And it was a really big deal. Um, now with 400, 600, 800 channels and every streaming device in the world, who knows? But it was a big deal at the time. So I, I would agree with that. There's um, a lot. You could, man, we could have a whole episode just about like this type of shit because there's a whole lot going on. Like when Rosie mentioned, like you got the climb of this happening. Cindy Lopper's popularity, obviously. You strapped the rocket ship with help from her. You're starting to get your product popular. You have Moolah who... I don't know, she's laid the groundwork for women's wrestling, and now all of a sudden that it's wrestling itself starting to get pretty mainstream, you know, of course she's going to want to chime in and be like, hey, like you, you pretty much did this with my foundation, you know? So obviously she's going to be a little jealous and bitter about that. I would assume that, you know, she's the one that fucking laid the groundwork, and now Wendy Richter's getting all the praise. But shouldn't you, you also have the climb food? of the pop culture. You have the Cindy Lauper. I mean, there's a lot. Like, everything's climbing all at once, and you know, people do get left behind when shit like this happens. James, I get that. But I mean, is that a woman thing or is that just anything that it just gets big at the different time? I, 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 well, I, th I, I think Mula wanted to be the if it's getting popular, she wanted to be the face of it. She has she has to be. She's the woman that, you know, laid the groundwork. So to see her being passed up with another younger, prettier face being shoved to the forefront of now you're getting famous off of what I pretty much gave you. I mean, of course, you know, Moolah's going to take her politics and, you know, put her power into that for sure. But isn't that the point of being a heel? Yeah. To, to showcase yeah. the baby face, make well, the baby face the look heel, better? Baby. I don't know. I don't know. So, I know so can, we, can we say that Moolah was the first that said, that don't work for me, brother? <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Is. You're exactly right. So uh, what um, again to the non wrestling fan at home that's learning on the on the fly? That's something Hulk Hogan said at the time when something wasn't working for him. He would say, "That's not working for me, brother." I wouldn't so, be surprised if Mildred Burke actually said it first because she was back in the '30s and '40s. And I think D. Arthur said it on Golden Girls. <laughs> Adam, did you um, this, uh, did you at were at one of those matches right there in the '30s and '20s or whatever it was you said? <laughs> I didn't get. I wasn't there. I didn't get to watch it, but I heard it was yeah. pretty good. I know saying the original screw job is a loaded statement. And I wonder if any of the uh, historians are going to butcher us on that because there, oh, there was a bunch of screw finishes in the 20s and we're 30s. Absolutely fucked right a now. A bunch of screw Take finishes. Your time, people. Yeah, uh, I think mean, Jim Cornett said something else about something, but. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I guys, I know, we're, um, I know we're coming up on two hours here. Um, so, let's. Um, I want to just briefly, um, and I, I know I mean brief, talk about Glow for a minute because it was a really big thing. Over in uh, over in the golden age, so Glow um, it has been a series on Netflix since to talk about the what Glow was. Glow is the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. It ran from 1986 to 1990. Um, it was a weekly show uh, on cable, and it had women in it that were not trained wrestlers. Um, and it was mostly uh, it was wrestling, and they were trained to be wrestlers, but it was also uh, a big uh, skits. Uh, it kind of reminded me of like like uh, like a Saturday Night Live laughing kind of thing at the time. They were entertainers, actresses, models. Uh, Mondo Guerrero was the one that actually trained them. Uh, they performed at the Riviera over in um, Las Vegas, and they they called themselves Good Girls and Bad Girls. Okay, there was the Glow House. It was down the street a little bit. They had house rules. They had they had curfews. Uh, David McLean was involved. Matt Simba was also um, the money behind it. It sounds like to me. Tina Ferreira Ivory started there. And uh, they were all over the place. They were on Donahue, Family Feud, Married with Children, Playboy, um, Jackie Stallone, uh, what's his name's mom, uh, that guy uh, that was Rocky. Sylvester? Uh, yeah, <laughs> was a big there, and they were on Card Donahue, Sharks. Donahue, man. That's they staged time. characters. 
Um, it became a kid's show in a way. Uh, characters on it, Mount Fuji, 350 pound Samoan woman, uh, Big Bad Mama, Little Egypt, Matilda the Hun, Godiva, Tina Ferrara again, I guess I said Ivory, Americana, um, Babe the Farmer's Daughter. Man, I love that name so much. Babe the Farmer's Daughter. Uh, Dementia, Chainsaw. Um, let, let me just real quick before we move on to the next thing, I just have to tell you, you think I know about wrestling? My dad said this weekend at the graduation, Brad, these are, he was telling somebody else, they know everything about every match ever. I have to tell you what this proved to me, this, this women's stuff. I don't know shit. There is so much out there right now. There is so much to learn. Like we were joking about before we even started this show. You could do 50, you could do 10 years a week and you can, and you, you don't touch it. You can, you can keep going. There is so much information out there. I'm getting, you know, we're going to keep this going. I'm going to get help because there's a lot of information out there. Um, glow uh just one more part of the um golden era it was important and it seemed like right up vince mcmahon's alley it, too like i i mean this seemed like exactly what the wwf would want um an entertainment value um yeah. ended abruptly in 90 there's a little controversy about why it ended but um definitely uh how did i miss it uh, that's what i want to know but um i wanted I to briefly mention that guys hopefully i didn't go too fast <laughs> no that was good but I, I, reading I, the matches you know, for next week. I don't know why why it, it didn't become bigger sooner than what it did. Because they were good. They were just they were good. as good as the I watched but. the documentary. Um I watched the documentary. It's on um it's free right now on um Pluto TV. Is that what it's called? I don't think that's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I TV. watched it on that. And again, you can watch the Netflix series. Uh it was very, very interesting. And Seemed like something would still work, and the ladies loved it. Um, they got hurt. Uh, they weren't all trained athletes, so definitely worth checking out. Um, I'm probably going to start the Netflix series. I can't believe I haven't watched this. Um, it's good. I really can't believe I haven't watched it. That's uh, really cool that uh, Mondo Guerrero was one of the owners of it. I didn't realize that, but Chavo Guerrero helps produce well, he all the matches for the uh, Netflix series. He was a trainer. A trainer. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, he was okay. a trainer, but he he beat them to death. It sounds like a little bit. But yeah, they, they needed to learn. Um, you know, it's funny. I'm looking at Ivory on there and I'm like, how oh, do I know this chick? Yeah, well, <laughs> sorry. They mean to say chick. Yeah. Lady. <laughs> but it's still, I mean, it's it's one of, like you said, you know, you got those people and they come into our attitude error and how they were treated then and the matches they had then, which we'll get in the next episode. It's completely different. It was very entertaining. So um, anyway, James, take it back to you, buddy. Well, uh, three uh, three matches that really laid the groundwork for what we're going to be uh, discussing moving forward, and and also uh, women's wrestling moving forward. That uh, I wouldn't say these were you know the most monumental of the matches per se, but it definitely helped us solidify some things that as women's wrestling evolved and moved forward, kind of got lost in the shovel and then got thrown right to the main event. I mean, there's a lot that uh, has happened in the, you know, 28, 30 years since a lot of these matches we discussed today. But uh, you know what goes good with wrestling is uh, how about some food to watch that wrestling with? So, Mike, what's the Mike's Me Minute uh, this week? Well, you know what? I, I had um, a couple of things on the list today. And uh, our little buddy, Devin, did a little group message about his little uh, grandma story. So today I'm going to go with a tuna steak recipe. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, shit. Quick, oh, quick and God. easy, you know, like, like Nevin, quick and easy. Um, all you want to do is uh, throw you some little uh, lemon pepper seasoning on there. You know, they got the seasoning that's like salt and pepper. You got the liquid that's like a wing sauce type deal put that on your little tuna steak <laughs> throw it on the grill um <laughs> and uh it depends on how you want your steak you know I mean, how you want it he you likes know, it, pink. it real pink real pink okay so rare you're looking at uh 120 130 you know temperature for the steak for that you know medium is about 130, 140, you know, goes on from there. But uh, yeah, 
take a throw a tuna steak, put some uh, lemon pepper seasoning on there, put a little side of a uh, white rice and asparagus, and and to get a little um, tasty food for um, old Devin over there. Oh, thanks for that, Mike. I'll have to try it later. <laughs> Oh, we're canceled. <laughs> we are so canceled. <laughs> we're honoring women on this episode, and we have Devin's story, and then we finish it with a fucking tuna. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, I, we're canceled. I think, God, I think after canceled. this, I'm going to ask for a continuance on the court case until after we do all the women's stuff, all the women's wrestling matches, because I want to focus my attention on just women's women's wrestling. So but you're uh, asking for a continuance? Yes, until we get past all of the women's wrestling, because I want to focus what grounds, on what grounds. I want to focus on my attention precedence. on the women's wrestling. There has and to be a legal coach. precedence. How about t- time? <laughs> <laughs> you just be honest here. <laughs> yeah, I'd just rather focus on the women's <laughs> stuff right now. I mean, Coach did send me a text, so. <laughs> well, the basketball game started. Oh, well, that's what this is about. Yeah, it's uh... – Kayfabe, it was a game six. Who knows? I didn't say what game. <laughs> By the way, Kayfabe from the last show. Yeah, Moxley did win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it must be uh, Sammy Guevara. So oh. he's out. I Thank just want to say, shout um, at, the reason I spoke about um, Jeff Hardy tonight was because of uh, our boy Eddie Prather uh, mentioned it to me. So uh, I know. Uh, wasn't the most popular thing tonight but anyway um who eddie thanks Correct. eddie um but it was a positive it was a positive he, he meant it in a positive way and i said you know what eddie you inspired me i'm going to talk about uh our boy jeff so i'm glad I you agree. touched on it i mean I, I feel for him i've been there i hope he gets the help i really, I really do um so we got Devin's Devin's graphic don't we oh yeah yeah my Devin's oh, yeah. graphic the hell, right well, oh, look, you're in a minute tonight, baby. I told the story. We've been running long. I didn't know if we were going to go to it or not. But for my Devin's demographic of the week, I want to put it all for this man, Trevor Murdoch, the oh, two-time oh. NWA World Heavyweight Champion. He uh, mm-hmm. he earned it last weekend against uh, well against three competitors: uh, Nick Aldis, Thomas Latimer, and uh, Samuel Shaw, who was a surprise. Uh, Surprise guests in that match. Uh, it was a really great match. I love it. And uh, I've been behind Trevor Murdoch forever. I actually never took the title off him ap- even after he left it off my fingers. I know, I know we're wrapping up here, Devin, but why would you think Trevor Murdoch's the right choice for that? Oh, Trevor's great. He's a classic uh, throwback to some of the, you know, some of the wrestlers the throwback of the 80s. What we need right now is a throwback with yeah. NWB A needs right now, or do we need to move forward? I don't know. You see, uh, Trevor's always put in the work for past 25 years he's been trained you know, he's, Harley not, you Race know he's not verified Legends. on twitter yet right he's not verified on twitter he doesn't have a check mark next to his name yeah neither is buff bagwell okay buff bagwell's not a champion i have more he's followers champion in all of our hearts, Brad. i'm just saying um <laughs> i I'm, I'm just speaking through mac cardona is speaking through me right now and what, uh what he does like, wwe what was he in wwe who zach Ryder, baby no, you're talking about Murdoch? You know and you know oh, it. Yeah. He was tag team champions with uh, Lance Cade. Okay. And then what? That's it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> and then went to the Indies for years. Finishing strong, baby. Finishing strong. Listen, um, I, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Trevor, Trevor Murdoch. Um, you take fat guys. You're fat. You're body shaming, Brad. He's a bigger oh, guy. Won the belt and you're body shaming. My favorite rest, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time is uh, King Kong Bundy. I bet it is. It's because of his head, not because of his stomach. Is the most under- <laughs> right? underrated WrestleMania ever. <laughs> Why don't they stop it? It can't be stopped. One man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what I realized tonight, James? I picked up your mannerisms a little bit. I said mean? this. I said this three times tonight. Shout out. <laughs> I said it three times. It's like Matt, you said. A uh, shout out to uh, Pat McAfee. I watch this shit a lot, and he, uh, they always give shout outs a bunch, you know. But you do it like this. You do it like this, like, uh, you know, like, like, I like the ranch. Shout out. <laughs> I'm doing shout it. Shout out to Hidden Valley. Yeah. Shout out. 
Anyway. Craft, no offense to Craft Ranch, but Hidden Valley. Woo! <laughs> All right. Bring us home. Well, <laughs> episode one of the deep dive into women's wrestling. Thrilling stuff. Uh, you know, we discussed, like I said, uh, great matches. Uh, moving forward, obviously, we're going to build. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, taking a pebble. And all of a sudden, we're going to have a boulder by the end of this. We're going to accumulate a lot of stuff. We're going to try to cover what we can. Obviously, we're not going to be able to cover everything. This isn't a, you know, documentary series. But it's uh, we want to cover some some milestones and maybe talk about things that maybe certain people haven't even uh, discussed or even covered their own selves. And uh, refresh your brain. And I'll always respect the ladies and get a respect for the athletic ability and the talent that they have and uh, what they put in the ring. And obviously, I mean, it's good because it's main eventing nowadays. So obviously you can't stop the momentum of that train going. But uh, that is, you know, that's uh, enough of me. Uh, you know, I am at James L. Corai, and that is my Twitter handle. And uh, feel free to reach out. DMs are open, uh, you know, but uh, that's enough about me. I've blabbed enough. I'm going to send it to uh, my crew so they can give their uh, – greeting or not greetings they're goodbyes and uh you know show their twitter handles and as always thank you for the support we do greatly appreciate it but it's not about me it's about them so uh brad take it away so i'm brad at um yes man brad on twitter and i just want to say real quick um the ladies wrestling is very important to me i'm not i'm not kidding i i enjoy it and that's it's great that they're main eventing today and I, it was a it was a slow burn to get there it was a little uh, actually it was ups and downs um, starts and stops uh, is maybe a better way of putting it. And you know what? Today was tough. Uh, I'm not going to lie. We did a lot of research. I was very excited about it, but we weren't 100% invested in it at the time. Uh, we're, like I said, I'm 46, coach is 48, and the rest of the guys are a lot younger than that. Um, so it was like looking back on something that we maybe don't remember seeing or we never saw at all. Uh, but we, we do give a lot of respect to Mula and to all those who have paved the way to what women's wrestling is today and we we uh, we do appreciate it and like i said before i i don't know anything yet um I, I can't believe what's out there that i don't know and uh i'm looking forward to actually learning with you and uh and going on this journey with you and uh i want to thank you for bringing me again bringing us into your homes and uh uh we're, we're going to try to do this justice we really are i agree I and, um, you know, I'm Mike Whitaker. You know, you can find me on Twitter at Whitaker1028 for anything. And, you know, I'm going to offer brag. You know, this is something that it's going to be new to us. It's something that we are going to be very interested in. We're going to invest everything we can to give you the best women's series we can. And we, we just hope we um, please the fans the listeners that's that's what it's all about so you know you guys have any questions comments um positive or negative you know let us know let us know what we're doing right let us know what we're doing wrong and you guys got any questions or anything else hit us up you know you can find us at at kickout crew on twitter um just do what you gotta do you know tell us tell us how we're doing and tell us what we need to do Adam, how, what do you think about you? Uh, I've, I've learned a lot. <clears throat> I forgot about this being the original screw job, and my voice is going out. <clears throat> so, um, Adam underscore from underscore Bama. And somebody shout out J.D. Hoop for the intro, because I'm tired of talking. Oh, shit. I, Why I did you do that? I can't J.D. Hoop, man. Thanks. We Buried the lead on this one. We did have in the last show. But we didn't. We didn't know. We added it later. So anyway, J Hoop man, I'm gonna tell you what. JD you have, Hoop baby, you are the man. He makes us look very professional with our logo, and now this video, we look legit. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I, I, really I, and honestly, honestly, man, you're so damn cool. I can't thank you enough. I really can't. I agree. I thank you very much. I really appreciate you. He's yeah, like a mad scientist. JD Hoop seven oh two on Twitter. Please reach out to him for everything. I mean, you see the Listen, shit he's done for us. He's amazing. He's amazing. I, I there, there is nobody that could have done better uh, of an intro or a logo for us. I, I don't care whether they're here or here. He was the man. He is the man. He's a mad genius. Thanks. I'll tell he you. He also does work genius. for Ringside Rant. He, um, he also does work for uh, Top Guy Theater. He, 
And for uh, Efren. And Efren, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Lot of and I didn't know that. All right, too. thank you for adding that. I didn't know. He, do, he does all the game event stuff with Efren. And yeah. tremendous and job. He and Efren the... shows work. He does Efren shows work, too. Yeah, fully. yeah, he does. He he is the premier outdoor photographer in Arizona. He is the Ansel Adams of Arizona. He goes out there and takes these shots in Prescott, Arizona, Sedona, Arizona. Uh, so if, if you're into... Uh, Outdoor photography with lightning and clouds and beautiful scenery. Check him out. He's 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 definitely one of the best. Nice. Well, Rosie, you and Devin are the only uh, two up next. Well, I'd like to uh, first off say uh, thank you to Brandy for helping out with some of the research on this and and providing some questions and giving us some guidance. Uh, we we uh, owe you a great debt. Uh, a gratitude for that. I also want to uh, reach out and thank uh, a lot of our uh, fans and listeners like Brian Haremza, who does a great job of uh, posting stuff for the show. Zol, uh, Eddie. Uh, we- Bobby from Ted, Oklahoma. Fucking right. Ted. Ted the Hillbilly Ted, Hill, man. Ted the right. Hillbilly Hill, for sure. RJ, Ted, Ted like, the we gotta, there's a lot of good shit going on, for sure. Great guy. Um, we're really proud of our show. And we're really proud of of uh, of our fans because you guys have really helped us to grow. We're uh, we've only been doing this. This is episode nine, and we've seen tremendous growth, which means the world to us. So, if if you love the show, please continue to tweet about it. I'm at Real Coach Rosie. We're at Kickout uh, Crew Pod, uh, and and let the world know because we're putting a lot of work into this to uh, entertain you guys. And it seems that that we're really doing uh, as best that we can and you guys are loving it. So I wanna thank everybody out there, uh, our fans, and I wanna thank the Wolf Pack, my group. And uh, I wanna thank my wife because we do probably five hours of research a week with taping and everything. Uh, all of us have family and family's important. And I wanna thank everyone's family for allowing us to live out our dreams and have a podcast. And we do, guys. We do. And uh, we've come a long way, and I'm really proud of everybody. And uh, just stay tuned because it's only going to get better and better. Coach, that was awesome, dude. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I could have said any better. Um, I just want to point out two things. Um, you can now find us at TikTok. On the Kickout Crew podcast. That's what, and we're also on Instagram at Kickout Crew podcast. You can find us on both of those. Um, I thought this this was a really fun episode to record today, guys. Uh, three matches I've never seen at all before. This is going to be a fun dive into women's wrestling for sure. Um, yeah, but you can find me at uh, I'm Devin Dowling. You can find me at Devin D nineteen on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to keep going. Thanks for doing that, Devin. I uh, appreciate that, man. I really, uh, yeah. what Rosie said, uh, really does ring true. Uh, obviously, I, I don't check the numbers a lot, but when I do check them, I notice that our audience is growing, and that's uh, really cool to see. We started with, you know, uh, double digits, and now we're up to triple digits. So it's really, uh, I don't know, it gives us a lot of presence. And the Twitter uh, feedback, I did not know we were that over with you guys because. A lot of our fans chime in, write questions, you know, sh- retweets, shares, and everything like that. It's really cool to see. Uh, we we, uh, we do Zooms uh, every now and again, and obviously a bunch of our friends that are fans, that are our ad free show family, they have the T-shirts, they have everything like that. So that's really a it, – it, it means something, you know, and uh, we greatly appreciate it. And uh, I just want to say be a friend and tell a friend, you know. Let's, and, let's get everybody and- on the train. And if you'd like to get involved with some of our nightly Zooms, we uh, we post that in the Ad Free Show Discord. But if you would like to come on, if you're not a top guy, please uh, DM uh, James or uh, or any of us, and uh, we'll be happy to send you the link at any time. We do it two or three times a week. We just cut it up. We have a good time. We watch wrestling. We laugh. We cry. We do it all. So if you want to uh, get uh, participating a little bit more, let us know. True. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. That's awesome. Anything else anybody wants to add? I think we're good. 
Yeah. We're good. Thanks everybody for listening. Um, have a good week. And Brad, what are we doing uh, next week? All right. So guys, we're going to dive into, um, so we're not quite sure uh, where this is going to go. Um, obviously we're going to go into the nineties here. So um, by tomorrow we will know. Uh, and we will, um, you, by the time this comes out, you will know already. <laughs> That was a dumbass thing to say, right? Um, so I don't know anything right at this moment, but um, we will have it out soon. Uh, uh, we have. We, we, if we, you guys have any questions, we are, questions this, we are very excited. We are very excited. Um, we are very excited to do this. Excited. I'm very excited. I'm passionate yeah. about this project. I really am. So uh, not just uh, the not in general. Hey, Brad, I got an opportunity for some more interaction. What what year time period are we looking for? Are we looking for maybe uh, the 90s next week? So we're not yeah. quite sure if we're going to, we're always, we're going to stick with the ladies. We're just not quite sure if this is going to be a four part episode or a three part episode, because it is a lot of content. I, I was really surprised when I was going through it. Like I said to you guys before, I don't know. I don't know as much as I thought. <laughs> so you have, um, you have a uh, new gen, then you have, uh, then you have attitude era, then you have Ruth's aggression. And then you, it's a lot, it's a lot. And then I'm talking to Brandy from Alaska and we got shimmer. We got pro wrestling Eve. Damn. That's all I got to say. Damn. So, so um, go on Twitter and let us know the best matches. And and we have six of us. We'll be happy to watch any match you guys uh, send us. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out between the six of us which matches we want to highlight. Yeah. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at right now. I'm not sure yet. And by the time you guys see this next Thursday, you already know. <laughs> so that's where this gets a little uh, awkward. But um, uh, I am going to speak with Brandy this weekend. Uh, she is a, a great resource. So. Uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm really excited because there's a lot I don't know. And as much as my dad thinks I know, I don't know a whole lot. Thanks to Amy Vaughn from Kentucky also. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We love Amy. And we, Amy, we love- Megan, Lindsay, Lauren, you know, all of uh, Alice ladies that take care Allison. of us for sure. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, we, we have uh, Lindsay plus one. I love when she says that. I love the <laughs> Lindsay plus one. I love that she, she's always got two pictures of her next to each other. Great <laughs> shit. And she makes great cupcakes. I haven't had any yet. Looking forward to that Top Guy weekend. Yep. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you don't pass out this year on Friday night, Mike. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You're I'm going to stay up for the Rebels happy hour. James, my, my, one of my favorite things about these shows is the way you close them out, buddy. Bring it. Well, episode nine is a wrap. Uh, thank you to all the guys here. Obviously, thank you to our fans again. Uh, we've uh, you know said that a bunch, but it really means true because uh, we wouldn't do this shit if uh, we got zero views. It'd be kind of hard to do this. So thank you to everyone for uh, joining in. Always thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the love, support. You know, please try to grow us uh, if you want to. Our we are on at Kickout Crew on Twitter. We do have a YouTube channel where we uh, do post full episodes. And uh, somebody's been slacking on clips lately, but I think we're going to ramp that up again. And uh, just like Devin said, we are on Instagram now. We do have a TikTok. We're trying to get out there and uh, just bring humor to everybody. I mean, life has its own moments, and uh, we're the kickout crew. We just want you to escape from some tough times and relax your mind and just, you know, laugh a couple times, man. The world's better when we all smile, for sure. But uh, that's enough from us. Uh, We want to wish everybody a good week. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time. What do you usually yep. say? You got I, that I want to add, oh. add one thing real quick. Too? You can expect a special bonus episode coming soon in the Ooh. future. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. That's true. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. There you go. And as James always says, kick out of two. When life gets kick you out. down, don't let it pin you to three because uh, kick out of two. Life is a pile of shit most of the time. Like It really is. But perseverance and, uh, you know, everything, that's what we're here for. And without, uh, as life gets uh, longer, awful feels softer, you know. So if it, if it weren't for uh, the bad times, we wouldn't appreciate the good times. That being said, you don't have more good times unless you kick out it too. So, uh, you know, when life pins you down, throw that shoulder, kick out it too, keep trucking. That's what champions do. See you guys. Later, guys. Bye.